Okay, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Morning and welcome once again to Perkins Online. Uh, where shall we go? One of the factors that helped to bring about the modernization of Europe and the development of the United States was the divorce of politics and religion. Religion is a private matter in these countries that has no hold upon politics. Whatever religion you want to follow, whatever your beliefs, you are free to hold as the First Amendment to the United States Constitution makes clear the Congress of the United States has no power to make any law regarding religion and in turn religion has no power to influence the making of laws in the United States. There is a point at which Europe very nearly made a total wreck of itself, warring over religion. They ended that, when was it, about 1562, was it? Treaty of, Treaty of, I can't remember at the moment, was it Westphalia? Um, and they haven't looked back, eh? And that, that is a factor in the modernization of Europe. Now, we see in the Middle East the very opposite occurring. Religion has a very powerful influence upon public life in the Middle East. And that is a, an important factor in its backwardness and inability to function effectively in, in many states, in some states, to function to achieve the kind of unity that um, has been achieved in Europe. People are preoccupied with things that have no real bearing upon, upon the progress of the society. Now, in Jamaica, we seem to be looking to turn the clock back. First of all, we, we have a Prime Minister sent by God and in consequence claiming the support of the churches and um, we have pastors coming out and making sounds uh, 
I was told that um, that in one church on Sunday was it one person severely attacked a certain talk show host who spent 24 hours a day on the radio <laughs> um, um, talking the, stunning the country with negativism <laughs> um, but that is the kind of that is the kind of nonsense that um, that we ought to be seeking to escape from if you don't agree um, don't agree but the ability of people one of the elements of liberty in countries like Britain, the United States and others primarily in places like Europe and one of the things that are co well, one of the things that account for their outstanding success in the world and their dominance of the world is that factor of liberty. The ability of people to think freely, to believe what they want to believe, and to pursue what ends they want to pursue, provided that they're not doing harm to other people in the process. Why should I, or any other person for that matter, be required to think as some other person thinks? Why should I not think independently of that other person, whomever that per other person? We see going on a group calling itself the uh, lawyers Christian Fellowship seeking to intervene to promote legislation that is in accord with its own religious views and in the process therefore to impose its own religious views upon everyone else in the society. This is a recipe for tyranny. It ought not to be allowed to happen. Two things there um, have come out of the their most recent intervention. One has to do with um, touching, touching of, is it children? Um, within the family? And this is to be made punishable by law and a quite severe penalty imposed. Now what is this, what is the nature of this touching that is, um, is to be prohibited? If a father fondles his child, fondling is frowned upon. In this, if a father fondles his child, does that mean that he is, um, this, uh, that this is an act of sexual perversion? And, and what is the fondling that would, that would constitute sexual... We have to be very careful about such things. But they go further. I mean, obviously, I mean, obviously parents and others in the family um, should not make what might be described as sexual advances upon little children in the family. That's, that's clearly wrong 
and that my understanding is that the law does not at the moment permit that allow that problem of course is to get evidence from within the family that this is what is happening but in addition to that they want to prohibit first cousin marriages the law in Jamaica like that in Britain and um, in some states of the United States has always allowed marriages among first cousins in fact there's a distinguished Jamaican um, Norman Washington Manley who married his first cousin um, and um, they um, they had a number of children one of which was another distinguished Jamaican Norman uh, Michael Manley who was Prime Minister back in the 1970s and again in the 1990s oh I'm being asked to take a break Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Now, as I said, Ma Norman Manley married his first cousin. Um, what ill consequence? Well, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe Michael Manley is an ill consequence flowing from that. But that was only in the dimension of his politics. Um, apart from that what evidence is there of of any um, misfortune resulting from that marriage and cousins have been marrying cousins in this country for very likely for hundreds of years no and what is the evidence that any ill consequence has flowed from that? But listen to the kind of nonsense that is emerging here. The Gleaner tells us that, um, that Senator Norman Grant, um, who we are told, um, I didn't know this, he's, he's a religious person. I didn't know that. Um, he is, is joining in the argument, supporting the argument put forward by the, these religious fanatics. And um, he, is based, he based his argument against cousins being involved in intimate relationships in part on animal husbandry <laughs> animal husbandry practice he is basing his arguments on in part on animal about his argument against cousins being allowed to marry which they've been doing for hundreds of years um, uh, in part on animal husbandry practice in which he said inbreeding is not allowed I would strongly recommend that careful uh, consideration be given in brackets to uh, banning such relationships that's almost like brother and sister cousins first cousins marrying, being allowed to marry or 
to have a sexual relationship is almost like having brother and sister having being married and having sexual relationships and producing children have you ever heard anything more absurd a brother and a sister are made up from the it, uh, brothers and sisters are formed with the genes of two persons a mother and a father and not their total genes of course half half the genes of the father half the genes of the mother uh, compose the son and the daughter right and um, which means of course that um, two children of the same parents do not have identical DNA okay they, they're they may get different genes from the father different genes from the mother um, indeed they are likely to get different genes from the father different genes from the mother now two first cousins are the product of products of four persons one of two of those persons the other of the other two right so there is a huge difference well um, the, the two of those persons would be related the two of those persons would be either brothers brother and sister or sisters right but there would be two outsiders so the 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 gene c content of a cousin of two cousins is considerably different from the gene contents of two of bro brother and sister the gene contents of brother and sister might well be considerably different right because one may have got half his father's genes and the other the other half and at the same time conceivably one might have got half his mother's genes and the other the other half right but in the case of cousins the the one is much further removed from the other because although two of two of the persons the, the two pair two of the parents could be brothers or brother and sister or sisters there are two outsiders coming into the into the thing. so there's a considerable difference because Senator Norman Grant that's a half-witted statement right there is the, 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 there's a huge distance between brother and sister and cousin and cousin huge difference in terms of genetic composition right so don't talk rubbish and and um try to impose your religious views upon upon the rest of the country it's cousins have been marrying for years and I am not aware as so far as I am aware they haven't brought any evidence of ill effect flowing from that so why don't they find something useful to do and stop, stop talking nonsense <laughs> Anyway, let me reinforce the point that, um, or repeat the point, that the association of
politics and religion is a very, very dangerous thing. It has been proved so in Europe. And in, in fact, America, <laughs> America came about, well, the r religious persecution contributed immensely to the settling of the United States. Okay? People running away from religious persecution in Europe going to other parts of the world among them the United States so keep your religion to yourself now and leave people other people to believe what they want to believe ok let's go to our telephones uh, hello 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 yes good morning good morning Mr. Perkins uh -huh. uh, Mr. Perkins uh, happy new year no your can voice you? is coming and going ok sec you can Keep hear now can you hear me now? Eh? You can you hear me now? Little better. Okay. Speak Happy directly into the mouthpiece. That's what I'm doing. Yes. Um, Happy New Year. Oh, the very same to you, my darling. Okay, yeah. Um, Mr. Perkins, I have a problem here. I don't know if someone out there would hear it. And can eh? You? I'm not hearing you. I have a problem here. Uh-huh. And I don't know if someone out there could hear and can help me. Um, okay. I'm working. I'm not working right now. Uh-huh. Because... Um, I have a pain in my two hands, my left hand and my right hand. You have pain in in them? In the air. What kind of pain? I I am um, right one. The the doctor said it's arthritis. Uh huh. And the left hand, I don't I don't even remember the word what he said, but he said it's the kind of work what I was doing because it was housework. It was what? Housework I used to do. Oh yes. And he said that something as weird out of the hand, and I have to go to the hospital to let the doctor inject. It back is here. To get the doctor inject, inject something. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. But it, it, it's gentle because they pay me a lot. So I have been sitting down here, not doing anything, Mr. Perkins. So my problem is I don't know if someone out there could help me with um a deep freeze. A what? A deep freeze. A deep freeze. Yeah. That I can and someone else could help me with some like I could sell like um, mixed parts and sell what? mixed parts mixed parts? yeah what kind of mixed parts? chicken parts oh I could, for example, Mr. Perkins, mixed parts and chicken back and so forth that I could help myself uh -huh. because I don't like to sit down and not doing anything but just because my hand I cannot do any work because the doctor said I must rest it but how are you going to do the selling because you're going to have to open the Deep yeah, freeze and I take out the chicken parts and... Yeah, I have a son. I have a son here and my son would help me. Uh-huh. Yeah, I have a son. And How old a, is your son? His son is 22. Oh. And he has a food and glass permit, so he'll help He me. has a what? Food and glass permit. Oh, he has a food and glass permit? Yeah. Uh-huh. So he, he, he would help me. Uh-huh. And my other problem is to Mr. Perkins. I was working and the time when I was working with my boss, I used to work full time, uh -huh. um, like just full time for the whole week. Yes. And eventually, that things getting so bad with him, he has to put me on three day. And I work three day, and the other two days I have to stay home. But I don't stay home. I seek around and get little days work and do. Oh, you get a little days work and do. Yeah, but doing why was he putting you on three days? Because things wasn't so bright with him. Oh, I see. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the two days that I used to get, I did not sit around either. I go around and I sit because there's there's Yes, there. yes. So because of that, though, it's it it helped me to it helped to to, to um affect the hand. Uh -huh. So when I when I go around and do the day's work, sometimes I have the mortgage. I have mortgage to pay to Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. And when I go around, I used to. When I used to do the three days, I get two thousand five hundred dollars. Yes. And I have Mr. Perkins. I would tell any lie. I have to squeeze out of it to put. All right, ma'am. I'm going to ask you to to give a telephone number. You see. Yeah. So that if anybody calls, we can we can get in touch with you. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. We take a break.
Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. I see that the the uh, murder rate is said to have well the number of murders since the beginning of the year has gone above 50 today is I think the 11th yes the 11th of January and we are gone above 50 murders not quite sure how much beyond 50 um, the minister had a discussion yesterday with um, the leaders of the security forces and um, we gather that steps are to be measures are to be put in place to allow the army and the police to deal with the problem in western Jamaica um, St. James West Milan <laughs> I see there's a there's a funny statement in the um, one of the I think the cleaner somebody somebody saying that um, the crime murders in St. James have climbed more than 300 percent this year above last year for the same period um there were nine last year and there three times three, more than three times that um, this year you know it shows you the how easily idiotic we, I mean 300 plus 300 and whatever it is percent 50 you know I mean, gives the idea of well, it, it's alarming enough, but how the significance of a figure like that depends upon where you're starting. If you are starting at nine, three hundred percent means twenty-seven. But suppose you are starting at twenty-seven, you know. So. Uh, there can be a, a, some excessive alarm brought about by such comparisons. Not that, not that it is satisfactory for three times nine persons to have been murdered in St. James since the beginning of the year, you know. But it's a little alarmist. Um, should have been less. Should have been less than nine, but should have been none at all if, it, if possible but the question is um, we hear that there's not going to be a new crime plan um, but if there's going to be no new crime plan then 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 what one gathers that um, Dr. Phillips is you know completing some something that is to be put before the Prime Minister I wonder what that is. Should be severe, extreme, and resolute measures. <laughs> and um, of course, must take into account the the report being circulated that um, that there is a plan afoot to make the coming elections the bloodiest well not the bloodiest but a bloody one um, and I noticed that the Reverend Hera Blair um, came out again um, reinforcing the notion of this bloody election with arms being piled up and so on Surely Dr. Phillips is going to do something about that. What is it that he's going to do? One looks forward, with, not without trepidation, to hearing what the plan is. Um, 
And I suspect that we may be hearing about a state of emergency, you know. I've been saying this. But what a wonderful opportunity. With all these um, shocking murders. Wonderful opportunity. There's, it's an ill will indeed that blows no good. And if the government were able to put in place a state of emergency, um, it might well have a powerful effect upon outcomes. Hello? Hello. Morning to you, sir. Morning, sir. All the best for the new year. Thank you very much, and the very same to you. Thanks. A um, couple of, well, a few quick points. Uh -huh. One, I heard you ask a question yesterday that... That what? Would they, the, the two bodies found in, in Manchester that are supposedly that of the Lynn. Yes. You asked the question, where would those statistics go? Where would those... Statistics go in terms of murder. What statistics? The two bodies, where would you put them? Would you put them for, for 2006? Oh, oh, I see what or you mean. would you put them for 2007? But the fact is that the bodies were found in 2006, even though they weren't identified. Uh -huh. They would have to go to... You heard me ask that question? Well, you were talking to somebody and you were wondering where where those stats would go. I don't think so, sir. You, I can't remember saying any such thing. No. Okay. Anyway. But um, um <coughs> but if they were if they were if they were killed mm -hmm. in 2006, yes. Um, I imagine that those that they would be among the numbers of people killed in 2006 right even though they weren't identified yes I, yeah, I agree yes. with that right. even though, though they weren't found yes yes um, so it isn't a matter of when they're found it's a matter of when they were killed right right uh -huh. uh, another thing um, I heard some time ago that when a person goes missing they're not declared dead when a person goes missing they're yes. not declared dead until after seven years do you know that, that if this is true I I suspect that there is truth in it. I believe I've heard something to, to that effect. But the, the question is, though, how many people have gone missing over the last whatever number of years? And is that well, I, I believe that um, I believe that last year <coughs> the number of missing persons were in the vicinity of two thousand, or more than that. But uh, but will we in seven years' time, if these persons are not found, will uh -huh. we in seven years' time? Will these statistics be added to, to the murder rate? Well, I suppose so, but then um, in seven years' time, we might be just about having another election, you know? But, but persons who have been missing and seven I don't years know. ago and more, <laughs> Mr. Perkins, as those statistics have been added to the murder rate each year? I, I don't. I am not aware of that, sir. Exactly. So oh. that simply means that more people are being I think murdered that, than we are I here. think that they will just um, be allowed to lie quietly in their graves wherever those are. I mean, I, I think this is sad that I need to look I mean, there's a man, for example, who went missing after being seen with police. Police were taking him away. And he hasn't been seen or heard of since. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. Eh? Yes. Yes. And seven years from now, they won't say they won't add this person to the to the murder stats. Uh huh. Well, this was this was a couple of years ago. This happened. Yeah, but the point I'm making is that a lot of people then are not being added, so the rate is much more than we think. Yes. Because those a lot of persons who are gone missing are not accounted for even after seven years, and we, and we don't hear them being added. Well, to the maybe so. Yes. Um, another thing, um, if there's a prediction for a bloody election, why a not... A prescription for? A bloody election. Yes. Why not call the election early? Call it early? Yes, and get it over and done with, instead of stretching it out. Well, I don't know that, um, first of all, sir, I am not sure that there is any plan for a, any bloody election, or if there is such a plan where that plan is coming from right the Romans had a question that they ask in circumstances like these qui bono right which means what? which means in in if you translate it into um, you know conventional English who benefits oh okay 
Right. But whether or not there's a plan, though, why, why wait to find out? Just get the election over and done with. Oh. And let's get on with, with, with the life of, of, of Jamaica. Yes, but um, the Prime Minister may well feel that, um, that she isn't yet ready for an election. I gather she's to speak to the nation on Sunday evening. Sunday night? Okay, I didn't hear that. I, I, somebody told me that. Okay. Um, so I, I don't know. But hopefully she will, you know. Well, let, let's see what happens. My final point. Uh -huh. um, the toll road, Mr. Perkins, did you know that if you break down on the toll road, you have to use a wrecking service that, that they have contracted? And, and, and the rates that, that this wrecking service charge is utterly ridiculous. Are you serious? I am serious. You cannot call your own wrecker. Why? Because they say that that is the only wrecking service contracted to, to work on a toll road. And I'm charging you some ridiculous sum to get your vehicle off the toll road. Oh. Ridiculous sums, I'm telling you. Well, I wonder about the legality of that. Well, I don't know, but this is what they tell you. When you break down, um, one of their um, people come and tell you that, hey, if you can't move, then you have to call. They call a wrecking service for you, which is somebody that they have contracted, and you have to pay them. And the rate that you have to pay them is ridiculous. And I think this is wicked. Well, you know, sir, um, they would have to take me to court, you know, because I don't think I'd be paying it. <laughs> because a lot of insurance companies know, right? They have a system where you can call their wrecking service, which falls under your policy. And on, even under my? Under your insurance policy. Most insurance companies know. Uh -huh. Have a system where you, where you can call a wrecking service under their, under your policy, free of cost. Oh, free of cost? Yes, under, under your insurance policy. Most insurance companies have it now. Accident yes. respond unit. Uh -huh. Right? And they're telling you that not even them you can't use. You have to use the one that they contract and pay them. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it's ridiculous. Well, I, I think that one should test this in the courts. Oh, okay, sir. Um, or consult a lawyer on it. I'd be interested in hearing what a lawyer has to say about it. Yeah, well, if somebody hears and knows differently, I, uh -huh. I'd beg them to call in. Uh -huh. All right, sir. Thank you very much. All right. All the best to you. Bye-bye. Okay, Pro problem about one of the problems we have in this country, you know, is that we don't test such issues. We, we, we just take it, we accept it. Um, much as we dislike it, we accept it and pay the money and, and um, you know, so it continues. Um, if people were prepared to go to court on this matter, then possibly a lot of things might be different in Jamaica. Problem is, of course, that putting something like that in the courts is going to take you an everlasting length of time, maybe six, seven, ten years, and it's going to cost you a lot of money, and not a lot of people can afford it. You know, which is to say, not a lot of people can afford justice in this country. And, um, you know, the courts don't make it easier for people to afford justice, having regard to the length of time that these matters take in the courts. Okay, uh, hello? Hello. Hello, good morning, Mr. Burke. Morning to you, sir. How are you? Not too bad, thank you. Hello, yes? Yes, I'm here, Mr. Perkins. Yes. Um, read a boat. Oh, you're Dr. Turner? Right. Oh, yes. Right. Um, How are things with them? Well, what happened is that um, uh, two members of my team went out on the same day uh -huh. that we uh, got a call in the afternoon. Yes. Now, where the goat was located is a very narrow, um, what do you call, um, drain, uh -huh. which was basically not accessible to my um, my team members. Yes. But what they did, they, they heard the goats and think what they did, they packed some tires. Hold on just a moment for me. Okay, we're back with you, Dr. Turner. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Yes, um, uh -huh. So what, you had to leave them there? No, what, yes. No, my, my, the group from my, um, from JSPCA, uh -huh. to the ambulance driver and the assistant, they went out there. 
but they come back to say they could not um, based on the space. Yes. They could not have heard the gold, but um, basically every time he came and they tried to use the rope, he just ran back in the drain. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So they basically looked at the situation, packed some tires, they could have realized that the gold came up and had a way or means of coming out of the drain. He'd come out by himself. Uh-huh. Oh. So they packed some tires there, like a step. Yes. And the lady who, the concerned citizen, she, I guess she observed her thing and she called us back and said the goal came out by itself. Oh, yeah. how absolutely wonderful. Right. And, so, and clever. Many thanks to that lady who called in and also... But I many thanks to you and the Jamaican Society for the, for, for the prevention of cruelty, no? Right, Quite and also sense. I need to say many thanks to those two members of and my those team two members of yours, who right? really sat and thought about everything. Yes. Although they could not access the gold at that point in time, they made provision that the gold could come out of the drain. Yes, and it did. Yeah, it did. Oh, absolutely wonderful. Right, Mr. Perkins. Oh, thank you very, very much. The Jamaica... Tell me something. Hello? Yes, Mr. Perkins. The Jamaica Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals is an organization that I used to hear a lot about when I was a little boy. Right. Which is, you know, a few years ago. Yes, it's 103 years old to be exact. Yeah. It's 103 years old right. when? Today? No, um, last year. Oh, uh-huh. 103 years old. Right. Um, but one doesn't hear a great deal about it these days. No, it's just still... Um Still functioning. We, we, we're, we're still functioning, and we're, to be exact, we're actually trying to spread our wings uh, because right now it is located mainly in Kingston where, where we have a, um, a sub branch in Portmore, a mobile unit. Yes. And it came on a track in Portmore. Uh-huh. That's at the middle, at the middle vale entrance at Portmore, um, to, to come on as park track. We have a mobile there. Yes. And it was, it's our intention to spread our wings even further across the island. Uh-huh. Because it's what is really unfair that basically everything is taking place in Kingston. Yeah. Cruel to animals right across the island. Uh-huh. You understand? Know uh-huh. But we have what is called um, educational programs. We're going to the schools now because the best thing is to start from a tender age for the youngsters to understand the, the importance of the animals around and how they should be treated. So What's we have the name of that programs. lady again? Hello? What's the name of that lady, your founder? Um, of the JSPC? Yes. It's a British... Yes. Um, British person. Um, she lived in Jamaica. Hello? She lived in Jamaica. Yes, yeah, she lived in Jamaica. And she used to ride a bicycle. Right. And come around to the schools. Right, she used to. What is her name again? Um, that is, that's, it's just a minute. Mrs. Right. Bourne. Right. Um, what was her Christian name? Her Christian name, exactly, that has slipped me at this point. Um, Mrs. Lum. Mrs. Lum. I can't, I, can't, I can't remember her name. Yeah, Mrs. Lum. Eh? Mrs. Lum. Lum? Lum, uh-huh. Love? Lum. Mrs. Lum? Yes, no, L-U-M-E. No, that's not her name. Miss Boyd, I remember. Mrs. Boyd. Bourne. Mrs. Bourne. Um, she used to ride this, a bicycle. Lady Lum. Uh, yes, I think she was wife of the colonial secretary. Right, Lady Lum. Yes. Anyway, um... It's good to hear that you're still going and going strong and yes, and, and um, wonderful work. We like we also have our outreach programs where we go into the different communities. Yes, and um, we do our spin with the programs. Uh-huh. Yes, and, but the only and, problem is and that your number for people who encounter such problems and need your help. Is your number? Yes. Yes, the number is 929-929-0320-0320. Or 929-429-4095. 4095. Okay. Um, congratulations. Wonderful. And I hope that you will get some the, the support you deserve. Right. And thanks to the person who called in actually about the goods. Shows that we are very concerned citizens. Uh-huh. All right. All right. And Thank you very much, um, Congratulations to to the people in Greendale, or that lady in particular, right. who brought this thing to your sure attention. That basically, we, the, based on the, the fact that we still have people who care about animals. Yes. And when we start caring about animals, we start caring about others around we us. Might, we might return to caring about human beings. Exactly, Mr. Yes. Perkins. <laughs> All right, sir. All right, have a nice day. Thank you very much. Same to you. Okay. Hello? Hello? 
Yes, I, I'm, I'm ashamed that I don't remember that lady's name. Um, she used to come around to schools. Mrs. Bourne, yes. Um, and one used to see her riding her bicycle. <laughs> I don't know whether she... I, I was in school in Buff Bay at that time. Um, I, don't, I don't know whether she... Um, whether she rode all the way from Kingston. I don't know. But she used to go all around the island to the schools. And, you know, bringing to children's attention the, the need to be, um, to be not cruel to animals, you know. I thought it a very good thing that she did. Maybe we need some more, <laughs> some more people like that here. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Hello. Mr. Perkins. Happy New Year to you. Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm, you sound as if you're coming. I don't know. There's something wrong with this equipment. Hello. With these telephone lines. Hello. Happy New Year, Mr. Perkins. Happy New Year to you, sir. I'm just calling to... to Are you calling from overseas? No, I'm not. No, I'm not. No. Um, are you on a cell phone? No, no, I'm not. No. Will, will you speak more into the mouthpiece of the phone? Okay. Let me see if I can change. Hello? Ch I'm going to change that handset. No, you, we have a Hello? bad connection. We have a bad connection. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes. That's better. I'm calling regarding the, the, the U.S. Embassy building. Uh -huh. I don't know what the procedures are, but I'm just... I, I remember reading some time ago about a building code. Yes. And they usually speak about um, commercial buildings providing simple little amenities, like parking services, um, the, the whole concept of bathroom facilities. But I realized that the new U.S. Embassy building has no parking there's nothing for, for the general public. So you pay a fee and you go in and no, there's no service apart from they just, you just go in for your, in, you have to stand in line outside. So I was wondering if, if, if it's that the fact that it's, a, it's a, 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 a foreign embassy building that there are special concessions that are given by the parish council or the government uh -huh. to, to build these things. Well, I suppose so, but, but look here. So where do the cars park? There's no parking at all. You have to find parking. On or the you road. have to let somebody drop you off and, and, and leave. Oh. That's very odd. Um, but then, you know, if you want to go to the U.S. Embassy and those are the conditions, I suppose you go. I'm just, I'm just concerned with the fact that the, the government... Um, has given them permission to build a building that is supposed to serve the Jamaican people, and you. No, 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 no. The the American Embassy building uh -huh. is not, as I understand it, there to serve the serve the Jamaican people. It is there to serve the interests of the United States. So, so. But if you want to go there, um, then you have to accept the conditions. That's my understanding. Okay, okay. It's just I, I, it, it, it just it just appears so so bad uh -huh. that a building, a new building that occupies such a large land landmass, uh -huh. there is no regard given to the persons who are coming in. You you you, you have to stand in line to to, to Well, of course you have to stand. In I, no, line. I'm not against standing in line. Uh -huh. It's just that you have to stand in line outside of the premises. Oh, is that so? Yes, you you you. Pass you mean in the on road? The road and you have to stand you, in the, you, you mean in the road? On the road? On the roadside. On the, on, the, on, the, on the outside, the parameter of the wall. Uh, oh, is that so? Yes. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, sir. I, I don't know. I suppose that, um, that if those are the conditions, you, you decide whether you are prepared to live with them. If not, you stay home. You don't go to the American Embassy. And, and, and the, the, the bad thing about it is that 
um, in former years, you apply for a visa and you got you got a, a visa. Um, an M, uh, you could pay a travel agency to to do the processing for you. As far as I understand, that is no longer being offered. Uh -huh. So as long as you want to go to the embassy, you have to pay the fee and go and stand in line. Yes. Does, don't you get a number or something when you go there? I think I heard somebody talking well, as, about as that. Well, as far as I understand, you, you, you now apply online. You have to apply, do your application online and you make an appointment date. Uh -huh. But a large number of persons are given the same time. Are given the same time? Yes. You, they, that there are several different time slots that people go in. So you will, it, it is not that you are given like minutes apart. So you will find that there's a large number of persons, so there will always be a line on the outside. Yes. My concern is that I'm thinking that the fact that they have built such a large premises, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if the parish council didn't have any say as to what was built so that some area, even, not, even, if, they, even if you're going to stand up on the outside, that some form of covering, because if it's raining, the people have to stand on the outside. Yes. Well, sir, um, the United States is not asking you to come to the... Um, that's true, that's true. ...to the embassy, right? So they may well feel that that they're under no obligation to provide any comforts for you, right? I'm, I'm not looking at, at the, the, whole, the whole idea of, of the the U.S. Embassy. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the process in terms of, is it a process that the, the embassy building a building in Jamaica uh -huh. would have to conform to the building rule? Well, I don't know that what building code would apply there. Be, okay, okay. Well, because well, is I'm there a building that code that says that, um, that if, you're building a, if you're putting up a building like an embassy, that you're obliged to provide shelter for those standing in line to go into the building. I, I don't know. I, I don't know of that. I know for commercial purposes, uh -huh. if you're building, if you're putting up a commercial building, yes. you have to have a certain number of parking spaces. Uh -huh. um, you have to have enough space to accommodate well. those persons who are coming there. Uh -huh. I'm just looking at it in, on, on, in, in, on the side that the fact that you have to pay to go and get a visa, yes. they are providing a service that you, uh, well, whether you get the visa or not is, uh -huh. is, is not the concern. But well, they probably it's look and see how the government of Jamaica treats, treats its, its people. people. Yes. Right? <laughs> and think that they are under no obligation to treat them any better. And um, that people are going to come to the embassy and pay the money anyhow because they're so desperate to get out of Jamaica. Because <laughs> I, I, have, I have seen... Hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, Back here. Yes. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yes. I, w I, I called to, to, to say, because I had a discussion with a, with a group, a group of us were having a, a discussion, and this, a foreign national was saying it, he remembers his, the U.S. Embassy in his country has a waiting area that you can go in and have a seat uh -huh. and wait in line. Yes. And you really wonder if the same courtesy could not have been extended to Which us. country was that? I think he said he was in. He was from Mumbai. Somewhere. Mumbai or Bombay. Oh, oh, um, in India. In India, yes. Ah. Oh, come now. I mean, <laughs> they would be far more respectful of Indians. Uh, they, 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 uh, and he he was saying that they're, they're not so desperate to get into the United States. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's just that they don't have any regard for us, and our, and our government has no regard well, for the Well, your, your government has no regard for you. That's right. Does That's it? right. It doesn't... It digs taxes out of you. Does it provide you with um, health services? You heard that woman who called me earlier on? Yes. She had a problem with her hands. With her hands, and, right, right. You know? And she obviously can't um, fund the treatment of it. Right? And the government health services don't allow her to, to get them. Do you think the, 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 you, you hear about the, the, the condition that people live under um, near bauxite plants where they're breathing in all this dust 
and having it co cover all the furniture in their homes, including their beds. Eh? That sounds like respect. R e s p e c k. <laughs> Does it? Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm yes. hearing. I'm hearing. It. It is just so sad that I mean, I'm just looking at the, the whole process. I know for building a building. Uh huh. Um. There are certain laws that our local businesses yes. must meet, and I, I, you wonder if the same laws were not extended to the embassy or if they have special laws because. Well, but in any event, sir, don't you know that? I mean, from time to time we need a little something, you know. We have to hold the panhandle. <laughs> <laughs> we have to. You know, we have to um, become the too strict. We can't be too strict with them. Yes, yes. You know, yes. we need a little something from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it to me. Okay. All righty. Thank you very much. Okay, sir. Hello. The, the Americans are not sort of running a tourist trade that is dependent on Jamaicans, you know. In that event, they would they would have wonderful accommodation for when um, the potential tourist goes there, right? Hello. Hello. Yes. Mr. Perkins. Yes, sir. Call to um, give you a little bit more information on the the GSPCA issue. The what? The JSPCA. You are just talking to Dr. Turner. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, Would you speak up for me? I'm trying, but I'm almost shouting. Uh, you're but, speaking um, directly into the phone? Yes, I am. Well, I don't know. Something is wrong here. Anyway. Anyway, I, I knew the lady to whom you were referring. The, you the what? I knew the lady to whom you were referring, Mrs. Catherine Hyde Bourne. Yes. Wife Ms. of the former colonial secretary. Yes. G give me the name again. Catherine Hyde Bourne. Uh huh. B O U R N E. Yes, I remember the name Bourne. And she. But I thought she. I remember a different Christian name. Um, she was actually. I know her through the fact that she actually um, donated her home at 32 Hope Road to Mr. Henry Fowler. Yes. Uh, who had the priory school there. Yes. And actually, Mr. Bourne, her husband, is buried on the premises. Oh, is that so? Yes. Uh-huh. So I, I recall as a youngster, Mrs. Bourne coming to prize givings at the school and handing out prizes and things like yes. that. Yes. She was a very delightful lady. Oh, yes, 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 I remember that. And you recall how she used to ride the length. The bicycle. On her bicycle. Yes. <laughs> to chastise the youngsters who were teasing the bullfrogs. Yes. Things like that. Uh -huh. There were a lot of tales about her. But let me ask you. I, I mean, I used to see her in the country with um, riding this bicycle on her way to school. Um... The, the, did she ride all the way from Kingston? Yes, I think she did. Oh, hell. Where she couldn't circumnavigate the hill on the bicycle, I think she pushed. Eh? She pushed the bicycle where she couldn't get over the hill, I suppose. Yes. But um, I knew her. I was a very small boy at the time. Uh-huh. Uh, but I heard the tales of her. And when I knew her, she was seemed to be quite old. Of course, yes. <laughs> We need but, a few more like that, Mr. Perkins. Eh? We need a few more people who care uh -huh. about things like oh, that yes, in yes, Jamaica yes. today. I think we're, oh, yes. we're that absorbed in in material things. Absolutely. Okay, Mr. Perkins. All right, thank you very much. Okay, All bye. the best to you. Okay, hello? Good afternoon. Good uh, morning here where I am. Morning, Mr. Perkins. Possibly after. Where are you calling from? London? No, Mr. Perkins. Um, all right. Go ahead. Morning. Morning. Yes, uh, I want to ask a question, sister. I don't know much about it. I just want to know, find out. If when you pay your fare and go to America, uh -huh. and when you come back in, like a toddler, like a 17-year-old, 
Do you have a problem what? He's a 17 year old and he went to America for three weeks. Uh -huh. And when he was coming in, his father gave him some clothes for him and his brother. And then he somebody, an ex cousin gave him some phone to give some little children. They are used phone. Because even when they come to the custom, the lady was saying $50 for one of the phone. For him to take, he must have to pay $50 for one. 15 she was saying 60 and the next custom to her says that, oh, it's old phone. Telephone? You hearing me, sir? Old what? Old phone. The phone already used. Somebody was there using the phone already. Uh-huh. But the, the custom broke and wanted him to pay $60 for one to take it into the country. The duty? Yes, duty. $60. Oh. And a jinker man said to her, say, his old phone, it's custom to her, his old phone, just take $50. But how many of these did he have? Four. Four of them? Yes, sir. And um, they valued at what? I don't know, you know, the value, but if for now you use the guy, you could say it's old. Well, phone. I think they allow you uh, $500 worth of goods duty free. Right? Yes, sir. And above that, you're going to have to pay. Okay. But I see a lot of people coming and they didn't pay no money. Uh, well, they maybe they didn't have more than the, the, what they had knew was valued at under $500. Well, I don't know. So I want to know what's the procedure if you can't bring anything when you go abroad and pay so much plane fare. Eh? If you pay so much plane fare to go no, abroad. No, no, no. What they're charging me on is import duty. Okay. So right? like the old phone you have to pay for. Well, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, you know. If yeah, they are so brand new one in box and all of that, if they're out of box and they're brand new, well, I say they no, I don't think they, for them. I don't think the newness of the phone has anything to do with it. Oh, okay. You just have to pay for them. You just have to pay the duty. Oh, okay. That's all I want to know. All right. Sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Have a great day. Okay, all the best to you. Okay, hello? Hello. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Morning, Parker. sir. How are you? Oh, not bad. Uh-huh. And your pertinent to those crime figures that you were given for St. James, what was the figure for the corresponding period last year? Nine? I, it was nine, yes. Yeah, well, if it was nine last year, for you to have a 300% increase, it cannot be 27, it has to be 36. Uh, yes. Because you're, it you're, is increased you're quite over right. the original <laughs> times 100. you um, no, 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 no. Of course. Uh, if you move from 9 to 36, it is 27 over 9 times 100, which will give you 300%. It, uh, it you depends. Start from a base uh, hold, hold, on, nine. hold on, hold on, hold on. It depends upon what you are saying. If you are saying that there has been an increase. Of 300 percent. 300 percent. You would have to move from 9 to 36. The difference shall be between wait, wait, 36 hold on, and hold, 9 hold and on, hold, hold on, hold on. If you are adding um, 300 percent to the original figure, right? Or if you're saying that the amount today is 300 times greater than it was last year, then that would be 36. If it right? increased by, in terms of percentage increase. Hold on, sir. It is the increase over Hold. the base figure times 100, and if it yes. increases, it's the but same But if thing. you are saying that the number of murders this year is 300 percent over percent. last year for the corresponding no, no. period. 300 percent what it was last year then that would be 27. If it was three times the amount what it was last year, but three times is different from 300 percent. No. When you're dealing with percentage, whether it's increase no, no, or decrease, no, no. it is increase or different. decrease no, over sir. the original figure. No, 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 no. Hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you very much. We're back with you, sir. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Uh, you know, if you move from 1 to 2, it's an increase of 100%. Yes. But if you move from 2 to 3, it's an increase of 50%. Yes. But you are moving by 1, but the percentage is di it differs. Yes. 
So you can tell give any story with percentage. Many times they started because as you were saying originally, when you start with a small figure and you move up the line, then it shows a greater percentage. Yes. Because if I move from 1 to 10, I am increasing by 900%. Yes. But if I move from 50 to 60, I am only moving by 20%. But the difference between the two figures is 10. Yes. So in terms of calculation, dear, what is there is erroneous because even in the 70s, I had to take on government minister to task for a presentation in the house in terms of percentage. And that was Dr. Ken McNeil. Yes, but uh, what I'm saying is that it is possible to say two quite different things about percentages, right? If, if you can say, if you say that the, the figure today is 300 times of three, three, not 300 times, 300 percent. Mm -hmm. If you are dealing with 300 percent, you have to multiply by four. Because it is no. increased over the original figure no, times 100. No, 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 sir. And if it's decreased, it's this the same is, Hold thing. on, no. Hold on. This is not an issue of mathematics. Uh, but that's what I learned in mathematics. No, this is an issue of English, right? What are you saying? What is the statement that you are making? You can make a statement that the figure today is 300% what it was last year, right? Which would mean that it is three times what it was last year. Uh, but three and times you can doesn't also necessarily make mean 300 percent. What? Three times doesn't necessarily mean 300 percent. Of in course terms it of means 300 percent, sir. Because when you are calculating percentage, it's the differential divided by the original figure, which Look, is the sir, you times can, 100. No, 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 no. You can compare the totals and you can compare the difference between one total and another. Those are two quite different statements. Well, I, I am going to stick by my original point. That is what I learned. Stick and by it if you like, sir. I have no means nor any interest in, in preventing you. But and all that I am saying is that you can say, you can make a statement concerning comparing the figure this year with the figure last year. And you can make another statement comparing the difference between the figure this year and the figure last year. Two quite different statements. All right. Well, we are different to agree here. Yes. Okay. A anyhow, the next thing pertaining to the goat, uh -huh. it's good to know that the goat was sensibly enough to come out. Well, uh, I, the goat would have wanted to come out. Uh -huh. And the, its problem was that it... It wasn't able to. It didn't have the means of getting out. Mm -hmm. Well, they constructed the means for it, and it took advantage of it. Yeah. But for one thing, the donkey, the donkey was not as fortunate as the goat. Which donkey? The one over in St. Catherine that they killed to use for meat. Oh, well, that's, the, again, so you're, compare, you're not comparing like with like. Uh, well, uh, not comparing like with like, but I am wondering if the killing of this donkey for sale is a reflection upon the economic situation in the country as sign of the times. Well, I don't know. It might well be. Uh, because some time ago when this government just came into power in their first term, oh, Lord. I remember down in Westmoreland we are a man eat another man with dumpling. Uh -huh. Down in Westmoreland. Uh -huh. So you understand uh, the havoc that this government has created upon the living standards of the poor people of this country. Has it really? Cause them to behave in abnormal ways. Well, Sister P will deal with it. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, and the situation of crime. Yesterday I saw on the TV whereby a man killed himself in my ear and shoot himself to death. Uh huh. Where? But, eh? Where? Ah, uh, that place called Coulthard Grove. Oh. But the interesting thing is that this man killed himself a couple of days before Christmas. Uh -huh. So I wonder why they want to bring it through it at this time. So probably make it look, make the crime situation look better than, look worse than what it is. Oh. So somebody may have some agenda in terms of himself. making the crime situation Hold bad out there to pave the way. Killing himself while technically a crime. Suicide, I, uh -huh. I believe, is a crime in Jamaica. Or, or not suicide, no. 
Suicide is not a crime. It is attempting suicide that is a crime. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't commit the suicide, I don't see what they can do to you. Uh -huh. um, Mr. But that is not adding to the crime figure then, sir? No, it won't add on, so I don't know why they're bringing it up uh -huh. now. But the people who saw it will know that this was a thing happened over two weeks ago. Uh-huh. Well. Uh, uh, Mr. Norman Grant. Yes. RDJ as president. Uh-huh. I hear you saying that you never know that he was a pastor. Uh -huh. But I read it some time ago in the press that he was a pastor, and I hear him introduce himself in that form at a JS meeting at Brownstone sometime last year. I didn't really, I didn't know that. Yeah, man, because the PNP party is filled up with pastors, you know. Is that so? Yeah, man. Well, I suppose since, um, since Sister P has been sent back out, the pastors have been flocking to it. Yeah, they're coming out of the woodworks now because you have two of them as candidates in the next election. Oh. And uh, you have Dr. Finn. But when I hear Dr. Finn, you heard him on Cliff Hughes program last night. Ah, uh, yes, uh huh. But uh, when I hear him, they may look like that man is a man who really appoint the Prime Minister as God. He <laughs> was more God Finn than the one above. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 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 <laughs> you, you heard the prediction pertaining to the talk show who was that would pass on? Uh, yes. What did he say in terms of how that person is going to pass on? He's headed for, um, what's the name of a place out beyond Spanish down there? Dove Cut. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if it natural, uh, it's natural death or something that will well, be Well, that's something to look into. Eh? That is something to look into. Yeah, because you remember I told you some time back about this Dr. Finn, you know, uh -huh. who was, uh, seemed to be the spiritual advisor to the Prime Minister. Oh, is that so? Because the lady did a very good job last night when the questions that she put on him, you know. Uh -huh. Because uh, you remember Mr. Manzi, when he came to power in 72, he had a spiritual advisor. Oh, uh -huh. who was that? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was either Ashley Smith or Sam Reed. Uh -huh. One was in this Senate, but I more believe it was Ashley Smith. Uh -huh. So Mr. Pattis never have any spiritual advisor, but I see Mrs. Simpson Miller. Uh -huh. God for one, no, because this man say he contact the Prime Minister on a regular basis. Uh -huh. Up to last week and the implications of the four sevens. Uh -huh. That's why some people are saying that the election will be called on the 7th of July, 2007. The 70th of the 7th month. Yes. Uh, but he brought out some interesting thing because the last prophecy that they had in the cleaner, he said that there would be economic boom in Montego Bay and all those things. When? Last, for last year. Oh, is that so? Yeah, man, but he never predicted about the escalation in crime in uh, St. James. Oh, but he said that there would be what? Him said pertaining to certain things, he made personal contact with the people them that him seen in prophecy. Uh -huh. I'm contact the security force. Uh -huh. So I wonder what he has seen in terms of crime if he has brought all of them to the attention of the security but force. But last year, and did he... why the country? You say that he predict prosperity in Montego Bay? Yeah, man, from Montego Bay, man. Oh, I see. And him said they're going to a massive uh, and, and it was God who told him that? Yeah, man, God <laughs> tell him everything. <laughs> So, <laughs> I tell you that one of them have my so hold on, <laughs> hold on a little bit now. You know, God is very tolerant, you know. Of course. So, because what is he saying? That God tell him lie last year? <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to get right off of death? Because, yeah, yeah, what the lady asked him. The lady said to him, but if you are so close to the Prime Minister and in regular contact, you could be privy to information that you are presenting as prophecy. Uh-huh. And that is how I look at it in terms of all of what they're saying, you know. And he says in terms of the new prophecy, the majority of them will be fulfilled by the end of May. I see. So all of these are on the drawing book as to the PNP plan for the fifth term. Uh -huh. So they will have all the information so they can come and present it because uh, Mr. Bill Johnson forwarded down to St. Lucia and his prediction. He has no credibility whatsoever. So they said, don't got to give them that tea in terms of pool. Let us give them prophecy. Not pool, but prophecy. I see. And politicians and pastors, all of them are tea, you know. Uh -huh. 
And him say that, him love to talk about the sevens, him say that, uh, Mrs. Simpson Miller is going to get the fifth term, the people's term. Yes. That is a common term that the PNT is using, say, look at Mr. Finn, uh, made up that one for the PNT in terms of slogan hearing. Yes. But, <laughs> and him say, him say, seven, uh, him say, me not a fly by night, uh, prophet. He has been predicting for over 30 years. Uh-huh. And he is accurate in most cases. Uh-huh. And uh, the Prime Minister has visited his conference every April at the Sheraton for the past six years. The Prime Minister has what? Visited his uh, conference where he, he holds every April at the Sheraton Hotel for uh-huh. the past six years. I see. And he invited Mr. Golden there last year, but he did not turn up. Oh, good for him. But if you have two <laughs> persons in a race, and one is going to win, and the other one who is going to lose, then when he will not show. Uh-huh. So he said that he is, he is implying that Mr. Golden will not show, but the Prime Minister will be there yes. for his conference. Uh-huh. So I hope the people of Jamaica will watch what is happening around them. And don't allow these people to come around and hoodwink them because the same thing said that the prophets were going into constituencies and would make predictions as to who would, would win in every constituency for the next election. But I, I wonder, sir, whether, um, whether the genuine Christian in this country mm-hmm. should not be concerned about the use of, of God, mm-hmm. uh, God's name in this sort of um, scandalous political fashion? That is what I would expect of them. In of political interests, you know. Because when I see the activities of these people, I have to be wary of these people, and I don't trust them in the least. Well. Because we have the most church per square uh, uh-huh. mile in the, in the, in the world. And yet still we become the murder capital of the world. <laughs> so they have feel miserable where that is concerned in terms of carrying the words of God in the right way and to put the people yes. on the right path. Yes. All they do is more delve into politics and hoodwink the Jamaican yes, they're people exploiting to support the people's national yes, party. they're exploiting the, the name the of God. The ignorance of the people in the so name of in God. In pursuit of political advantage. Uh-huh. Yes. Well. Anyhow, Jamaican people, wake up. And watch these wolves in sheep clothing as they right, come sir. around. Thank you very much. Care. All the best to you. Okay, thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? Hello? Yes, yeah, sir? Yes, sir. Hello? We have, we're having a lot of problems with that overseas line. Yes, sir. Hello? I was listening to your show, and it's turning to be the year of the goat. I thought that the what, goat Hello, there. would you try call? Would you call us back and see whether you can get a better yes. connection? Okay. Uh, hello. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Good morning to you, ma'am. Pleasant morning, Mr. Perkins. How are you? I am not bad at all, and you? Oh, not too bad either. Wonderful. Great year to you. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, um, may you have a you prosperous and productive one. Eh? May you have a prosperous and productive year. Where? Anywhere. <laughs> you, 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 you think that it, you, what, you're offering me a visa? <laughs> no, man. Peace, peace on the inside. I see. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not with the politicians and the persons now. I'm with peace for the people. I see. First time on your program. Happy to have you. But I've always enjoyed your program. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to inject a level of information. Read that lady and the prevention of cruelty to animals. Yes. Um, and one that rode a bicycle from school to school. Yes. I am not sure whether or not you are searching for the name May Jeffrey Smith. No. Because I happen to have met her. She lived in Stewart Town, was connected to Westwood High School. Uh-huh. And no, no, was, we're talking about Mrs. Bourne. That's right. Mrs. Bourne was an older party. Yes. Yes. Following that, the work was continued. What is the name of the one you're talking about? May, Miss May Jeffrey Smith. Oh, yes, yes. And she um, was connected to Westwood High School uh, here in yes. Stewart Town. Yes, I remember that. Not just that, but she was the initiator of the Home for Birds. 
Yes. And so she named a place near to Westwood, Bird's Haven. Yes. And that is in Stewart Town, Trelawney. And it still exists? Oh, yes. Bird's Haven still exists. It is now a part of the Westwood High School property. I see. Yes. Um. And um, I think, if I can recall, she died in... I, I don't remember if it was the Gilbert flood rains in St. Mary. Uh-huh. Yes, but she she worked closely along with um, the late um, Miss Parsons, yes. who was a principal at Westwood High School. I think I had... A, I, I... I met that lady when I... Yes, uh, that, uh, that's the one I know used school. to be in the country. Yeah. I don't know of the one in, in, in the corporate area. Yes. And so I just wanted to add this little bit of information, uh-huh. and I can assure you that it has some level of validity. Yes. Well, I, I certainly know of Miss... I, 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 certainly know, I, I certainly know of her name. Yes, yes. Yes. And of course, when it when it refers to the prevention of cruelty to animals, I wouldn't want her to be left out. She taught us a song at school. Uh-huh. Don't kill the birds, the little birds that come about your door, but let them wobble forth their songs till cold drives them away. Uh-huh. And every time I remember that song, yes. and every time I pass Bird Haven, I remember her. You, can you sing it? Don't kill the birds, the little birds that come about your door. But let them wobble forth their songs till cold drive them away. Oh, how lovely. I want you to have a very prosperous and productive year. Oh, thank you very much. And continue to highlight the intentions and the visions of the Jamaican people. All right, Mom. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And you have must a great call day again. today. Uh huh. Okay, hello? Hello? Yes. Perkins online? Yes, it is. Yes, I want to speak to Mr. Perkins. Speaking? This is not Mr. Perkins. Mr. Perkins. I'm not speaking to Mr. Perkins, no, am I? Why you think so? Oh, Mr. Perkins? Ah. Yes, well, if I'm speaking to Mr. Perkins, I'm, I'm having some problems. I need to speak to you. I'm calling from Trelawney. Yes. And, um, I have three points I want to make to you, sir, about the construction of the highway in Mon- from Montague to Falmouth. Yes. The construction of the hospital and fire and the police station in that area. Uh-huh. And also about crime in Montego Bay. Yes. Let me talk to you about the construction of the highway. They are doing very good with the road. They are putting in proper drainage and all that stuff. However... Which highways are you talking about? The one from Montego Bay to Falmouth. Yes. The North Coast Highway. Yes. They are putting in very proper drainage and all that stuff. Doing a very good job. But now it seems that the government of Jamaica is pressuring them to finish the highway for the World Cup cricket. So the actual surface, the, the tar and surface they are putting on the as- asphalt. Yes. It's, sub- it's not good at all. It's very bumpy because they are rushing that part of it. Are you serious? I'm telling you, they're spending all this money putting in the proper infrastructure, the proper drainage and everything, which is very good. It's the best one I've ever seen made up to that point. Are people driving on the road at this point? They are driving as the construction keeps going on, sir. And eh? so, but I'm telling you, the, the, the actual road surface itself uh-huh. is inferior. After you do all this money, spend all this money, put in all this drainage and stuff, where would you go and hurry now? And give us a, a, a substandard road that we're going to have to drive on when we work up the garden in the next month and a half or whatever. Uh-huh. We have to go drive on this road still. Uh-huh. So why not put in a proper, proper road? The other point I want to make about to you, Mr. Mr. Perkins, is... About what? I want to make another point to you about the construction of the hospital, the fire department, and the, and the police station in Falmouth. Uh-huh. The government broke ground on this, these projects over two, three years ago. And now they wait until the very last moment. And they're trying to brush this thing. Even though as we speak, they're working in the hospital day and night. Which hospital is Farmer's it? Farmer's Hospital. Uh-huh. So, um, you know, and it, 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 I, I'm wondering why they take the, why they do all this thing at the very last moment. They know the worker crypt was coming. They know, and they broke ground from, the, from 2002 for the police station. Yeah, they just, they just start construction in the last What is this, a police year. station? Huh? A police station. The police station in Falmouth. Uh-huh. They just start construction on it. New police station. Yes, but it's not going to be completed for, for the World Cup. Cup. 
It's uh, not going to be, and the other one is not going to be complete. hospital. The fire station is not going to be complete for the work of either. Uh -huh. And the hospital that they're working on day and night is not going to be complete for the work of uh -huh. either. And they're breaking and they're doing it right now. Oh, is that and so? And they could have done it a year earlier. And everything would have been done now, and they would have to be racing around the clock right now. You sure it won't be ready? I'm positive it's not going to be ready. I live there. I live in Sudan, so I know what I'm talking about. Oh, well. The other thing I do, I work in Montego Bay, and um, I want to say this about Montego Bay. Montego Bay is the tourism capital of the Caribbean. We make all our money from tourism. Most of our money is made from tourism. But the government is not putting back any money into tourism in Montego Bay. If you look at the roads in Salt Spring, um, Green Pond, Norwood, Rosa, these high crime areas, we're talking about people getting killed in Montego Bay. It's all these areas, you know. Uh -huh. They don't have any roads at all, you know. The police cannot do any work up there because they don't have no roads, no drainage. Well, hold on, sir. When last you had a look at the government's budget? Boss? You, when, the, when the budget debate, you, you don't listen to the budget. I listen to it, but it's it just, just numbers. It's just numbers to me now. But not only that, what the government collects in revenue, you talk about collecting from the tourism industry, what the government collects in revenue is a fraction of what the government has to spend. Oh. Right? And the government's primary ob obligation is to service the debt that Dr. Davis has imposed upon the country. Oh, so we just, we, we, we get the what left then? We, we well, not no left. <laughs> not no left, you know. <laughs> they might have to borrow again I and create. I am wondering how they have to go borrow again and create more debt. What I want is how we have a tourism capital. Eh? How we have a tourism capital. And if you walk down St. James Street or Barnes Street, well, look, we you tourism the capital. Montego Bay is what? The tourism capital of the Caribbean? Of the Caribbean. Oh, is that so? And if you walk along St. James Street... Who says it street, is the tourism capital of the Caribbean? You smell the drains. Even the new Creek Street drain them take too much years to build. If you go there right now and look at the drain, it's full of garbage. They don't clean it out. Even the gully that they run that run to the sea. It's full of garbage. It's never clean. Uh -huh. And this is supposed to be the tourism but capital of the Caribbean. But I think Sister P said... I think I heard her say some time ago that she was taking some money from the NIS fund. I think it was the NIS fund. Some more money. In order to beautify, clean up and beautify Jamaica for Cricket World Cup. Well, it's, it's, And they were it's going to be employing 12,000 people at $2,000 per week each. I see some money, some mash it, I chop on the roadside. I, I, not even chop it down, I just build a cut off the top of the grass at them. Oh, yes? I, that, I, if I beautify it, I make it a call that. Uh -huh. Then it, I just waste your waste money. We need that money to fix the drains in Montego Bay and fix the drains in Falmouth. These are the areas where you have a World Cup stadium over there, and they didn't even say, make we have one World Cup match there. They're going to have an opening sermon, and then that, uh, that, that stadium is not going to be used again yes. for any World Cup matches. It's, I mean, who made this decision? The stadium is not going to be used for any World Cup match? No, you're only going to have some practice match from? here. Where are you going to make a brand new stadium and have an opening sermon, and then you have one World Cup match going to be played there? No, no, man, I think you're mistaken. Eh? You're mi you have to be mistaken. I am not mistaken. All the World Cup matches will be played at Sabina Park. All they're going to have is some practice matches down here. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so you build a brand new stadium of $25 million. And all they're going to have is an opening ceremony there. I mean, which guy in Kingston is making this decision? Who is making this decision? Who is, what's well, going on, Mr. Perkins? Is one thing for dog and money and buy trees. Is the next thing entirely for dog no and money. <laughs> You know, I'm wondering, you know, if, like, you know, if Down these guys are actually and sitting down and for... thinking about what they're doing when they're making these decisions. I was just going to go, politics thing are going on. I don't understand it. Uh -huh. I'm very upset about the whole thing. And I wonder if the other Jamaicans are really think, I know, I'm thinking about what, has what to these be, people are doing. Somebody has to be in confusion to do something like that. And this is fact. This is not a joke thing. You can't check it yourself. Not one World Cup match will be played at the Chulani Stadium. They are going to have his open sermon in the stadium, going back to just some little practice matches. I That's see. <laughs> you know, but, you know, we, we just need to... Um, they obviously to, have a lot of money, sir. 
It looks so. Well, I mean, let, because let, the Chinese government give them and them don't free, know what I don't to do with it. <laughs> but then, you know, we, no, I'm not. We needed this, we needed the stadium down here. Yeah. I will be the first to tell that we needed that stadium down here, and I was I support the building of the stadium down here. You do, but you don't build that stadium and then don't put no match down here. Well, I mean, if you go to a, a, if you go to a cricket match in Sabah in a park, like a regular Jamaica versus Barbados match, yes, you don't see five thousand people in Sabah in a park. You take the same match and bring it come out, discover being a centre, and I bring it go out part and arm, Saint Elizabeth. You see twenty thousand people here. So whoever is sitting up there in Kingston making the decision and not even they're not real country people. Yes. They might think about them things and say, Well, country people support the match more than even town people. So they must bring some stadium down at country too and develop the whole Jamaica so that just having everything in Kingston and that. Yes, sir, but I tell you something. It's marvelous having a stadium in up there, right? It would be wonderful to have one in Port Antonio, one in Port Maria, one in uh, St. Dan's Bay right. and so on, right? But can we afford it? Well, Mr. Mr. And if we had the money to build those stadia, would it be best to use it for that purpose or to use it to build hospitals and schools and other such places? I personally think you don't need a money. Hold on just a moment. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, Back sir. Um, as far as the stadiums go, Mr. Perkins, mm -hmm. you don't really need a stadium in every parish. If you put four stadiums strategically placed well, around Jamaica, you can, you, can intake, you can help the people. Them, especially what the but the fact sport. of the matter is, sir, that we have to prioritize. I, I agree. We can't you. just spend money on that. We have to decide what is more important and what less important. Right? Well, as far as and I'm concerned, right now, me, the sir. most important thing is health and education. I should have thought so. And um, the hospitals need to be fixed up. Uh -huh. the, the schools need to be secured and fixed up. And it, the police station them too. Absolutely. And government buildings, we, we, we run down and mash up. They need Absolutely. to fix them up. Yes. And okay. Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, uh huh. I said, and they waste a lot of money doing a lot of stuff and wasting the money. Yes. But the most important thing I want to say before I come off this phone is this. If the government is, is serious about stopping the killings in Montego Bay, the crime down here, uh -huh. because the killings, you know, not happening in the city of Montego Bay, you know. Uh -huh. It's happening at Green Pond, Salt Spring, Rose Heights, um, now, which is just some local community on the outskirts of the city, but people think I really want on a man to go be that. It's, it's really on the outskirts. People uh -huh. just call it Mobile. And these communities have absolutely no roads. I'm talking about if a man just shoot a road and go over there, the police cannot follow him. Uh -huh. So the police cannot seriously um, do any kind of patrolling or any kind of crime fighting in these areas until they have good roads with good drainage. Because these roads are. These areas are some like hilly, hilly areas. The rainfall is just river run off of the road come down in a man take up here. Uh -huh. And the government has known this for the last 20, 30 years. Nobody has done anything about it. You know? And I blame successive governments too for not properly forward telling about this thing. But now this government in power for 17 years, they could have done something about this thing. Uh -huh. And they're not done, doing anything about it. And they call them oh, all this gun gun in a, because the people are frustrated now. They are, they're living like... Animals, in, in, in a way, in a way, you, you, you're talking about, in, you know, some of them are not real good people, yes, but if you put good people amongst bad people and them living like animals, they expect Mr. Mr. Perkins, you must <laughs> expect some kind of breakdown and law and order. Yes, yes. And the government has a responsibility to do something better than this, and they are not doing it, sir. Uh -huh. You know, and I, I, I tell you, I've been listening to this for about nine years old, and I'm almost 49 now, so you know, long, long time I listen to you. And I tell you, your program is good. Hello? Yes. Your program has been good, and I am following up every day I listen to you. You know, I mean, I agree with everything I say sometimes, but yes. at the same time, you know, I agree with everything me go say some of my time, too. So <laughs> I just say, but you do a wonderful job, and I am just very upset right now about what the government, they are not, they, it just seems like they are not planning things properly. And they are not calling, talking to the people in the area that they are going to do any work and, and getting a kind of consensus building that you know, like they're not even involving the people. They just go and make an arbitrary decision 
them sit on a town and make a decision for country where and them do involve the country people them so people who sit on and say wait and what is and just like, like the other day when they build a bridge they want to say Mary and the bridge is too low yes the man I tell them say the bridge too low you know <laughs> but they don't listen to the man <laughs> and so the government they just come and say move from the circle boy country boy why you know but what about the old, the, the old country man out of Yalos and the same thing <laughs> they don't believe <laughs> we can't tell them nothing so you see me they don't listen to we you know and then when they make a big mistake and spend up 200 million dollars on it you see we that man know. that man didn't go to university and get a doctorate right. you see, that's his problem they matter <laughs> what you have to have doctor this and doctor that all the, doctor, all the doctors that I know so far in this government is fraud because they, they're not doing anything and they must waste no poor money and I go and see them bright them stupid man I tell you they're not bright <laughs> we've been led by some people in the bright we want some people we're practical we're going to do the things right for the, for, forget about the PMP and the JLP we want people we're going to think like Jamaicans and put Jamaica first and put the, the people of Jamaica first yes. and when we have that we may have a good government yes. anytime we have a government we put the people of Jamaica first in front of, in, in, in front of party politics we may have a good government uh -huh. sir I uh, thank you for listening to me. All right, sir. Thank uh, you for calling. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hello? Hello? Dr. Moti. Hi. How are we? Uh, we're still surviving. Yes. But, you, oh, comrade, you you are better off than that, surely. Uh, what? You must be better off than that. <laughs> uh, let me briefly comment on a very important issue. Yes. Um, this, this uh, Christian group of lawyers. Oh, yes. Every time I hear uh, reports from this um, this committee looking at, uh, I think uh, there's a bill about sexual, uh, they want to broaden the definition of sexual uh, um, uh, harassment, uh, sexual whatever, yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they, what they'll be that choose to, to, to report, uh -huh. but. Um, but they seem to know that group in um, going to photo sittings. But they they seem to want things to remain as they are now. Um, there's a I think there's a I think there's a there's a move to have things like buggery and um, some other sexual hacks to be regarded as rape. As rape? Yeah. We can only be regarded as rape if it was done. Without consent? Definitely. Uh -huh. And you know, there are many sexual hacks today. Huh? There are many different sexual hacks today. Yeah. But um, this group seems not to in, in agreement with, um, you know, some of these things that are regarded as rape. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, they, but what they seem to be putting forward are those things that they, they teach in the church. And, um,. I don't know if, you know, in a multicultural society like ours, we, or laws. Well, I, I don't know. In fairness, my understanding is that, um, that what they're talking about is situations in which people violate other pe persons' bodies. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, and, um, you know, I don't know that one should, yeah. Uh, I, I'm not sure that those um, that they're wrong in in those cases. You no, no. Uh, if, you, heard... if somebody uses a stick yeah. and um, <coughs> violates some young boy's body, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Then I, I think the penalty should be as as serious as um, as in the case of rape. Well, but, what is now regarded as rape? I, yeah, well, I don't that's, have much of a, an argument about that. No, but my understanding is that, you know, that the, the draft bill uh -huh. seems to be taken in account that is that, 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 that uh, what you mentioned there. Uh -huh. But they seem to be saying that unless there's a penetration, uh -huh. by, unless there's a penetration uh -huh. in, yeah. in the whole way. Yes, the, whole well, way. the penetration, penetration is is necessary to um to prove rape. Yeah, in the whole we have um, You have um, to prove penetration to prove rape. That? As Mr Justice Small said, um yes. you the Crown had to prove penetration. But uh not 
necessarily that he drove it to the hilt. <laughs> All right. What I... All I'm going to do is to make sure I see as much as I can go on taking one of the things. Uh -huh. But the one, the, the marriage. Yes. Um, if, if they should make it a penalty for one to marry, you know, one cousin. Well, not a, a penalty. Um, yes. uh, uh, to prohibit it. Yes. <laughs> what would happen to those persons who are already in union that, um, you know, with cousins? Well, uh, those acts were done. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I assume that if they got married before, but then it prohibits some um, sexual relations, so I should well, imagine that if there are some first cousins who are now married and um, and living together and, you know, having sex together, um, then I suppose that what they would be saying is that the law should prohibit the latter? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what they're getting at. But it seems to me, sir, that we have been having... We have been having cousins, marrying cousins, in Jamaica for hundreds of years. Yes. Right? They're, they have not come forward with any evidence, so far as I'm aware, that any ill effect has flowed from this. Yes. Right? So why should they now arbitrarily decide seek to impose this law upon upon the country religion is a very dangerous thing when allied to politics you know yes you know as I'm saying that you know our religious views you know we, we should curve them in some ways when we deal with uh, national issues yes but I, I feel though that for these committee members have some time on their hand uh -huh. and they must utilize the time eh? I see yes well but, um, well, they ought to get Mr. K. D. Knight onto that committee. Um, maybe he would help them to utilize it. I, 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 well, I think it's a serious bill, and um, I just hope that some other group in the society will make their contribution. And I'm going to try to see how much I can make mine. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh -huh. Anyway, we we talk again. Eh? We we'll talk again. Yes, sir. Uh, you're very brief this morning. I hear that Sister P is addressing the the country on Sunday night. The people. On so, so what did you say this morning? Yes, I I heard it. Somebody told me this. Oh well, um, I don't know. Aren't you looking forward to it? Yes, I'm looking forward to my prime minister's um, uh, address in the nation. Yes, man. Yes. I hope she has something to say. Well, uh, 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 someone cannot address the nation unless they have something to say. A big one. Someone cannot address the nation unless they have something to say. Is that so? Uh, yes. I used to think that that was so, but, um... <laughs> Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> but, um, I th I'm sure you'll be having some c comments come Monday morning. But, but, by the way, who's, who's, who is talk to you? Who is that his number? That's her number. I, I don't know. I'm you're wondering not, about it. You're not afraid? But not, not really. I'm not wondering about it. Because, um... <laughs> Well, these these um, religious prophets who ta ta um, who claim to have a telephone con um, contact with God, you know, yeah. he can just go home and ring up God on the phone and and ask him what's going to happen. <laughs> okay, I trust it's not you, though. Eh? I'm I'm hoping that it's not you. You're hoping it's not me? Yeah, man. Well, who would you be hoping that it is? Nobody at all. I hope it's that uh, a piece of false uh, talking. Yes, well, it's a, don't pay any attention to that. That's not serious. Okay. All right? I'll be good. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Okay, that brings us to um, time for the news. We'll be back here in about uh, 20 minutes. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. And uh, we go directly to our telephones. Hello. 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 Yes, good afternoon to you. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. How are you, sir? Uh, well, I, I, I am not... I don't know. Something is wrong with some of these lines, you yes, know. Yes, because not, uh, I... I, I the normal. We are speaking to you. You can't hear. Huh? Is, I'm speaking to you just... Although I usually speak to you. I yes, I know. I, I, I can hear that. But, mm -hmm. um... 
But there's something wrong with the connection. I don't know what it I is. Sometimes you get it up. Sometimes you get it up. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, my days might be numbered, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's seven times seven. Or eh? <laughs> I don't know if it's seven times seven or whatever. Well, I don't know, sir. Yes. Um, I don't know whether it is natural causes or yes, yes, part of the yes. <laughs> bloody intentions. <laughs> I, I must first of all congratulate Mr. Owen Crosby, uh-huh. a lawyer from Manabri. He had an excellent letter in today's Greener. Oh, is that so? I, I have not seen it. What, y- what yes. is it about? He, he was saying that we, we need constitutional reform. Yes. You know? Uh-huh. And was commenting on the appointments of judges and prime ministers. Absolutely. Correct, sir. Yeah, I will. Would you like me to read it for you? Yes, please do. Yes, it says here, Constitution needs reform. Dear editor, dear sir, that our Constitution is a child of historical imperialist Britain, which has been. No, I I didn't hear that. that Take, for example, the appointment of a powerful person such as a prime minister. Why should a prime minister not be elected by the people? instead of being appointed by the Governor General on undemocratic conventions of a political party, such conventions being in substance appointment by a few party delegates. Another serious problem is the system of the appointment of judges. Yes. Why should judges not be drawn from the widest possible pool rather than the narrow confines of the civil service? And why should not there be public hearings on the suitability of judges Absolutely to right, the appeal courts? I think, I mean to say, Mr. Crosby, boy, you really hit it this time. Yes. You know? And Absolutely it brings, right. It brings me, the other day we saw how many judges being appointed to a high court. Yes. And, and they might be excellent people, I have no doubt. But we know nothing of the They attitude. might as well as they might not. Exactly, right. Mr. Perk. We don't know. We don't know. And we don't know what are the criteria exactly. that determine their appointment. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine was... And then we saw that they were trying to get some amendment to the law to, to, to make judges stay longer on the benches. Yes. And director of public prosecution. Is that so? Yes. Well, Mr. Perk. I gather that they're... Well, there's a particular judge who is coming up to... Yes, I understand. A particular judge. You know, some new lawyers went before him to be, you know. (laughs) And when another lawyer said, well, I understand that this might be the last (laughs) time you're doing this thing. And I I believe words were to the effect that he would be there for a very long time. That was the impression that the person who was saying it might be dead. (laughs) Yes. But you know, Mr. Perkins, I think it's an insult to us self-respected people. To so what? I think what is happening is an insult to the self-respected people of this country. Well, are the people of this country self-respecting? Sir? It does not appear so, Mr. Perkins. Uh-huh. And, and then again, think of it logically. The director of public prosecution office, the, the, the people are leaving it in droves. Right? Uh-huh. They had an, an investigation into what was the reason for it, right? We have not been told the results of that investigation. Absolutely. And instead of correcting the problem, whatever it is, is it low salary? Is it because of the relationship between the head of that organization and the people? Why is that the, these brilliant um, prosecutors are leaving? Should we well, there was, problem, there was at one time, you remember a so, couple of years ago? Yes. There was a big um, furore down there. Yes, and Mr. Muir had made a report. And the, and the report was invited, yes? Yes. And um, and now we're hearing that, what, about five persons are leaving? Yeah, and then Mr. Perkins, we have a lot of brilliant lawyers I- I- in the island. Uh-huh. Why, is they, why aren't they being um, invited to, to sit on the, in our high courts? These are lawyers of long-standing experience, yes. well-versed in the law. Yes. Why isn't the opportunity given to them to enter into our courts? Well, you know, sir, judges? high Why? court, the high court judges yes. are chosen by, well, the judges yes. are chosen by 
The Judicial Services The Judicial Services Commission. Yes. Appointed by the Governor General on the advice, on the advice of the Prime Minister. Yes. I believe after consultation with the leader of the opposition. Yeah, but that doesn't. But was... consultation with the leader of the opposition I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that the leader of the opposition had made any real contribution yes. to the decision of whom course. to appoint. And you know, I, I called a talk show who was some weeks ago and was pointing that out to the person. And they became very irascible <laughs> and upset. <laughs> oh, is that so? And, you know, I had to say that um, I never said things. I, I had to, put, to, to point out that I don't think that they were a burden, overburdened with any brains, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> you know... Um, yes. Um, did, did you remember that play, Cyrano and the Bergerac? Uh -huh. That French play? Yes. And, and where they described the man with a three-letter word? Uh -huh. I think we have too much of those people parading in Jamaica. Yes, indeed. Hold, hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here with you. Hello? Yes, Marty. I'm, I'm going to pay for you uh, something. Just listen to this, sir. Yes. It's a deep systemic problem, you see. The, the justice system in this country was never designed to really provide swift and effective redress for, the, for all the citizens of this country. You heard that? Yes, I heard it. And you recognize the voice? Exactly. The same man who's talk about the, the greatest transfer of wealth. Okay. The Saban and, you uh -huh. know. The, but the, the justice system was, was never, never designed right. to provide swift and effective uh, remedy, whatever, for, this. for the people of this country. No. Right? Then what was it designed for? Exactly, Moti. Eh? That is a very, 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 very bad statement, you know, because... It's a it, hell of a statement. It, it, it's a very serious statement, you know, Moti. Yes. And you know, Moti, if persons occupy certain offices, were, were, were really outstanding in, in, their, in their, 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 their tenure in such offices, like an Earl Warren in the United States yes. Supreme Court, or some of these fellows here in the English Court, then somebody could see that um, you know you might make out a case for the extension and, uh, but Moti I don't think any of these people in the top positions in our system have distinguished themselves that we have to hold on to them <laughs> you, you know there's no case can be made for that well uh, if 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 the, the if the regulations are being changed or the law yes uh, to make it possible for judges to serve longer yes then the question is why? Which judge? Exactly. Which uh, is the judge that we want to be to yes. serve? And, who, and, and who, let us look at his at, at his career yes. and how distinguished it is. Yes. Right. Exactly. And whether that would be justified. Exactly, Moti. Yes. And um, I mean to say, what was this Greek man? We, we need a where we don't use flashlight, we need some of these arc lamps to search to see any distinctiveness that um, would recommend them to be served yes, much indeed. longer. <laughs> <laughs> we need some arc lamps. But Monty, we as a people, we can't. And, and, and look, think through the problem. People won't steer the, the director of public prosecution's office. Why? Is it low salary? Is it bad relationship between them? Let us fix that problem. Yes, indeed. You can't fix that problem by making people stay longer. But they're, they're, precisely, that is quite so This is that stupidity of the greatest kind. Yes. Eh? And the same thing with the high court judges, but as I said. Incidentally, as you talk about the, um, the director of public prosecutions. Yes. Uh, it is worth remembering that um, Mr. Crawford has not yet been charged. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, the English language, some of us don't understand the English Well, language. I don't know. That you so much, you know, know because imminent... It, yes, it was imminent. imminent. The prosecution was what, imminent. What their interpretation of imminent. <laughs> yes, indeed. And that's... Um, 
coming up to five years ago, no? Yes, yes, yes. yes. And at the time that this statement was made, uh -huh. you know, yeah. and, and who it was made to, yes. you, you know, Very well, it does, that, <laughs> <laughs> it does not build confidence in the ordinary people of this country, you know, a justice system. Monty, I object strongly against any effort being made, and I would invite the lawyers of this country and the ordinary people, the common man, to rise up, Monty, and object to this thing. In whose interest is it to extend the, the tenure of these people? It, it, it can't be in the interest of the Jamaican people. No, no. You cannot, Monty. So. And, and we have to stand up as, 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 as citizens. Yes, so we need to. We need to attend to the issue of the Constitution. Yes, Mati. It would Very need to. And it must be brought back into the fore. Yes. And I would invite all people of goodwill in this country to examine. You see, we've had this thing now. And we've seen, seen the bad parts of our Constitution. So we must correct it. Yes. Why can't we correct it? We need to correct it. We need to correct it. <laughs> <laughs> and Mati, there are brilliant lawyers out there that can be invited as yes. it's done in England as it's done in the United Absolutely States so. to sit on and it would bring a better balance mm -hmm. it would bring a better balance instead of promoting people all the while from in-house yeah, that is quite true you know quite true we, we, need, to, we need to insist on these things yes Marty. indeed another thing Marty, this gentleman here the Reverend Harold Blair uh -huh. I heard him on an interview yesterday on RGR and towards the end of the interview, he was saying that, uh, well, some of these candidates, we look at them, and if we approve of them, if we don't approve of them, we recommend to the political parties <laughs> that they not run. <laughs> now, what a piece of effrontery. <laughs> the Jamaica Constitution don't say anybody has to be approved by anybody no, to, to be a candidate, really. buddy. It's what the people, is this man setting it's up the people who that? determine that, so. Eh? It's an electorate. It's the electorate that determines that. Yeah. Exactly. You're, you're absolutely right. How can he? How can he see such powers? I mean, just say this yes, has all these, all these, um, you notice all these church people are yes. forcing themselves forward to impose exactly. their views upon. You know, and this nonsense. I mean, just said, I, I expect, well, every time in Senator Norman Grant yeah. talk, I always expect nonsense. Uh -huh. But he has outdone himself this time Absolutely. with this cause of this. Absolutely. Thing. Thank you, you know? very much. Thank you, much. All the best to you. Okay, uh, hello? Very good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon to you, sir. Um, you are? I'm David Dobson. Eh? I'm David Dobson. Mr. David Dobson. Or Dr. David Dobson. Mr. Sir. Eh? Mr. Mr. And you are manager of the Spanish Town Hospital? Right. C CEO. Eh? I beg your pardon? CEO. CEO. Yes. Um, which is another way of saying manager, I suppose. Well, that's quite correct. <laughs> yes. Um, tell me something. Uh, uh, a lady called here yesterday um, telling me that she, she had a problem. She went to the Spanish, she, well, she was frightened. She thought, you know, that it was a very serious problem, or might have been. And um, she went to the Spanish Town Hospital. Uh, at the entrance to the building, encountered a security guard who wanted to know what was her problem um, before he would allow her into the building. Uh, I, I did got that, I'll get that information this morning, but uh -huh. I find that rather strange because that is not our policy. That's not your policy? No. While we do have a security guard manning uh -huh. our entrance, it is not a requirement for patients to disclose their medical condition. Uh -huh. However, uh, unfortunately, uh, the configuration of our present accident and emergency unit has two entrances, one, and, and they are on opposite um, sides yes. to each other, which is not the ideal. Um, and let me hasten to add that we are in the process of constructing a new accident and emergency unit. You're, 
in the business of constructing right. a and new it, accident and emergency unit. Right, and it, huh. it is slated for completion in perhaps in a few weeks. Yes. So, and that will take care of that configuration problem. Yes. So, based on the system we currently have, patients um, are, need to be dire emergencies to access the emergency point. Hence, if the patient is not obviously ill, the patient would be, uh, when, no, let me rephrase that. If the patient is not in obvious distress, the patient would be rerouted. If the patient is not, is not? Does not appear uh -huh. to, to be in obvious um, distress or obviously ill, meaning yes. that the patient walking and is conversing as a normal person. Uh -huh. They would be rooted to the casualty area where a doctor would be do the screening. Yes. But where the person is is is, is of course obviously ill and brought in as an emergency. Yes. They if go somebody comes in. in on a stretcher, for example. Right. Yes. Yeah. You go right in. Mm -hmm. No, what I'm told is the problem is that those persons who appear to be, you know, not, not ill, not an emergency, yes. and are directed otherwise, some, you know, do take offense to that. And, um, you know, while we understand, the, the problem is uh, every, everybody would not meet the criteria for that level of emergency. Yes. And so they would need to be routed to another access point. But a doctor should do this. Well, unfortunately, we do not have the kind of resources for a doctor to be placed. If there are any doubts, however, the security does not ask what is wrong, but the person is directed in, and at least a nurse can interview the patient yes. and determine whether the patient should be routed to the other section. Yes. So um, I don't know why that patient would have had such an unfortunate encounter yesterday, uh -huh. but that is not our policy. Uh -huh. And I, I take it that the hospital takes a dim view of that kind of treatment of a patient by somebody totally unqualified. To no, well, no doubt we would. In fact, I have been investigating and I have not received any confirmation that that was done uh -huh. because it is not the norm, it's not our policy, and we have had frequent training sessions to take care of that. Yes. One does from time to time be he hearing things about the Spanish Town Hospital and one gets the impression that like so many other similar institutions in Jamaica, uh, there is a deficiency of, um, of, you know, resources. Well, resources in any business is, is never infinite. Uh -huh. And... Um, as such, one has to manage the best way we can with the res available resources. Yes. How, well, the major resource gap we have at this point is our infrastructure, given the fact that St. Catherine is a rapid, a, a rapidly growing uh, parish. Yes. And so you will find that the numbers we are currently seeing far outweigh the numbers we had in, in, in let us say, the past decade. In, in the past decade. And, and that is the reason why anyone who walks on the compound at this time would see signs of um, some work going on to, you know, modify areas in, in stages to meet the demand. Yes. And um, what one of the things we did, advert, we did uh, place it in the newspapers that we are doing this construction and um, it is causing a, a bit of inconvenience to some persons. And, uh, we, you know, we'll appeal again to ask them to bear with us because um, in, a, in a while we are doing all of this to improve the services to them. Uh -huh. uh, in fact, we, we have actually placed even a tent at the area that people uh, can wait since the space is limited. Uh -huh. We normally have like two, uh, two persons on average accompanying an, a, a patient and the, 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 the current uh, waiting area is not able to hold all that many people, especially those that did not come to see the doctor. Yes. And so because of construction and the restriction, we have asked that only one person can come inside accompanying a, 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 a patient, yes. a relative. And so some of these are all some of the, the, the problems that we are experiencing. But we do appeal again to the public that we serve to bear with us because in a while we will be in a better position uh -huh. to serve them. Well, sometimes the problem is not so much um, what is being required as as what is um, as the manner in which it is done. You know, maybe the security guard was 
trying to direct that person, but um, but went about it the wrong way? Well, that is quite possible. Uh, as I'm saying, I'm yet to confirm that that, that accord. Yeah. Uh, but assuming that it did. And if I am to assume that it did, it is not the kind of behavior that we encourage. Yes. We, we do appeal to our staff to, to exercise, you know, the kind of care and oh. practice good customer service. Yes. And we will continue to, to investigate. My patient services manager has been asked to do a thorough investigation because right, we do sir. have a customer service representative assigned to the area as well. Yes, indeed. And, uh, you know, I find it strange that nobody is uh, is aware of what occurred um, there. Uh-huh. And so, you know, if we, we if I'm to assume that it occurred, I would apologize to the patient uh-huh. that had the encounter. Uh-huh. And we, you know, hope that in future that again. person would not encounter those difficulties. All right. Thank you very much. Well, All the best to you. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online, and we're going to give you some email now. Yes, Mr. Perkins. Dear sir, this email came in um, in the afternoon yesterday. Speak up a bit. Dear Mr. Perkins, your caller just before the 2 o'clock news yesterday, which was Wednesday, which means it was Tuesday, was saying that Jamaicans should forget the traffic guru over here issue and move on. What your caller appeared not to realize is that the story cannot be left to rest until a full account is given of the whole issue. Absolutely right. After all, the public at least deserve to be informed whether the money has been paid back. Uh-huh. Secondly, it could be argued that if the cash had to be paid back, then Why was it taken there seemed to be some admittance of guilt. Yes. However, what I noticed about your pressing question to the caller was, why does a foreign company, which has an interest in the Jamaican governmental system, and is a beneficiary of such a system, what reason would that caller have, especially when there's a matter of contract being debated in that particular year, offer this donation on the basis, according to Mr. Pickersgill, that they had heard that the JLP was mounting a massive advertising campaign. For some reason, your caller seemed to go mute in his response when posed with the question. Your caller also tried to equate the cash for, for question fiasco in the UK in the late 1900s when Mr. Neil Hamilton, the then Tory MP for Tatton, was accused of asking parliamentary questions on behalf of Harrods boss, Mr. Mohammed Ali Faid. What the caller did not seem to address is that Mr. Faid runs a very successful department store in the centre of London, South Kensington in fact. So therefore, it would be in his interest to make those forms of donations to the minister or even the government for argument's sake. I think that your caller is at least ill-informed. But wait a minute. You'll soon hear from him. (laughs) <laughs> Avid UK listener. Well, look here. Um, the, the, the thing is this, that w- one can understand a company like Grace Kennedy that lives in Jamaica, right? It has an interest in the Jamaican roads. It has an interest in, in matters of security. It has an interest in health care and all the rest of it, like any bu- Jamaican person and that it should make a contribution to to a political party. Um, It's making of a contribution would would probably reflect these interests, and um, that is entirely reasonable. What would be the interest of Trafigura in Jamaica? Trafigura has one connection with Jamaica. It has a contract to lift oil from Nigeria. Right? Um, are we then saying that 
Moshe Figura thinks that the PNP would better serve that interest in having it lift the oil and lift the oil on the basis of a contract that it would rather have than risk having to negotiate with the other party then the question arises is that contract in the interest of Jamaica or does it bear fully in mind the people making it the interest of the people of Jamaica or are they coming to a deal with Trafigura why would Trafigura feel that another party coming to power would would not want to continue that contract with it if it is performing satisfactorily and if the contract is fair Mr. Perkins by mere chance I came across a story recently of the amount of journalists killed in the line of duty last year some of them were in Iraq some of them were in the Latin American countries bear that in mind Mr. Perkins while I go on to my other point <laughs> Mr. Horace Levy of the PMI has mentioned his street information of the stockpiling of massive weapons of war in the country in expectation of an election year this is also seconded by no other personage than our Commissioner of Police, Mr. Lucius Thomas, who says that intelligence also informs him, him of these facts. Then along comes Bishop Blair again. He of the deliverance days during Mr. Siaga's reign. He too has heard of the stockpiles. I put all this against what this new prophet in our midst, Dr. Finn, has said about the, the leaving of the scene of a talk show host. <laughs> Did you hear? <laughs> did you hear did you happen to hear nationwide yesterday afternoon yes I did I was careful to record the program because I began to notice the insidious questioning of Mr. Cliff Hughes oh one question to Dr. Finn was does it mean that the talk show host is leaving the profession the answer no leaving the particular station no what do you mean by leaving dovecot <laughs> the answer yes <laughs> mr perkins there was no need for anybody listening to that program and the, the line of questioning the characteristic of the particular talk show host that you were the person that Dr. Finn has in mind. Oh, that is to so. frighten you? Oh, maybe. Into shutting your damn mouth? <laughs> or what? <laughs> but put in the light of what Dr. Levy, no, it's not Dr. Levy, Mr. Horace Levy, and um, the Commissioner of Police, and now Bishop Blair has said, you had better watch out. If I were you, I would take Mr. Alson Stewart very sound advice. And shut my damn mouth. <laughs> Dear Mr. Perkins. Well, I think that they're going to have to bear with me. A little while. A li well, I don't know. I don't know how much longer they will allow me. <laughs> Dear Mr. Perkins, about a year or two ago, there used to be a certain gentleman who would come on the air and carry messages to you 
of men threatening to lick off your head, of the youth them don't want hear no more talk about doom and doom and not now go on. Everybody must talk in one voice. Where is that gentleman today? Have no fear, Mr. Perkins. God is with you. It is only a nation that has lost all hope in rational forecasts and practical means of strategizing for the new year that would consult the services of charlatans or village prophets <laughs> who have dared to utter their divine promises, prophecies published in the daily, in the Gleaner today. Though that these heresies are given prominence, signals that there is nothing left but the superstitious to preside over the country's affairs. <laughs> the vacuum of leadership and direction created by the abdication of leaders in the public and private sectors have been filled by the occult. Jamaica is now looking to numerology and the Uber man <laughs> for solutions to our problems and all good sense has been thrown to the wind. All this under the disguise of the church. It is a good thing that God has a strong constitution <laughs> and that he's not as vindictive as we are. <laughs> yes, indeed, I've often thought that. <laughs> um, that was that was an excellent letter, I think. <laughs> Good day, Mr. Perkins. I'm begging for your intervention on behalf of the law-abiding users of the Portmore Toll. Mr. Perkins, we have to subject ourselves each morning to executive buses and other motorists who are not willing to join the line and wait their turn. Hence, boring and forcing us out of the line and using the fourth lane, the soft shoulder, which is for pulling over if you need to stop as a regular lane, and they speed at 200 miles per hour in droves. Having called two police stations, I have been told that they cannot do a lot of patrols as they are required to pay a toll. <laughs> I called the administration section of the force, and this was seconded as being true. The police have to pay a toll if they are going through the toll road to investigate a uh -huh. matter on the toll road. So no law applies on the toll road then? I cannot get the head of but traffic. But certainly the law cannot be enforced. <laughs> I cannot get the head of traffic or the commissioner or the minister. Mr. Perkins, people are going to die in bundles on this toll road if something is not done to fix this problem. As I'm not pre and I'm not prepared to be one. Law abiding citizens have no rights in this place. You can no longer call it this a country. I'm just fed up. I've already been robbed sixty dollars and I'm not prepared to be robbed of my life. Okay. Uh, it's a very dangerous situation from what you described there, and I've been hearing about it from other sources. We take a break, we come back in a moment. It is true. Okay, thank you very much. Back here, more email. Mr. Perkins? I think the quality of our emails is excellent. Yes. It is excellent. <laughs> Mr. Perkins, hi, Mr. Perkins. I'd be most grateful if you would give a shout out to Mr. Martel Watson, who will be 100 years old on the 14th of January 2007. We, his grandchildren and his children and great grandchildren and great great grandchildren in England, Jamaica and Canada, wish him a loving and happy birthday. Lots of love from us all, Grandad. Mr. Martel Watson. Mr. Martel Watson. Yes. Happy birthday, Mr. W Wat Watson. And may I wish they you... haven't put his address. Eh? Um, there's no address. Uh -huh. um, uh, it'd be 100 on the 14th of January, 2007. Uh -huh. And this is a greeting from his children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-great-great-grandchildren in uh -huh. England, Jamaica, America, and Canada. Uh -huh. Oh, boy. Um, I wish you a happy birthday. Uh, and you know what I would like? 
if it were possible to speak to you on air, uh, however briefly, it would be very nice hearing from you. That would be on Monday, I think. Eh? It's on Monday? No, oh. it's Sunday is his birthday, I think. So. Sunday is his birthday. Yeah. Oh, we could speak on Monday, man. That would be lovely. Mm-hmm. Or? The 14th? Uh-huh. Yes, whenever. The 14th is Sunday, I think. Um, mm-hmm. It would be very nice talking to you, Mr. Watson. But happy birthday in any event, and may I wish you many more happy returns. Um, keep the bat straight, your head down. And don't fish outside of the off stop. Okay. Hi, Mr. P. I love your show. It makes me laugh every day. Even though your discussions are no laughing matter. Keep up the good work. Much respect. Oh, thanks. From California. From California? Yeah. Uh-huh. I gather we're not heard, being heard there today, though. This is would be yesterday, uh, yesterday answer. afternoon. Dear Mr. Perkins, here's a problem. When I try to call Perkins online on the international toad free line, my line is always dead. Always? The line is always dead. Oh? My phone works fine. I'm certain the problem is connecting specifically to either radio or program. Perhaps the problem is local to my phone network. I'm wondering, is, are there others having the same problem connecting? With regards to the problems in Jamaica now, the solution to these problems must lie, Mr. Perkins, in the government doing some long-term planning. As a nation... Yes. Jamaica must enact laws and implement processes that will create a foundation of strength. This must primarily be centered around education. There should be a kind of martial plan that will, by law, require certain minimum in reading, writing, and reasoning skills. We can move forward. And we will move forward when our people are literate and educated. This is the only way, Mr. Perkins, that will afford them the level of self-confidence necessary for individual progress. Best wishes. And this person is a Jamaican living in Atlanta. I agree with you, sir, and I tell you something. My metaphor for it, you see, is ho- the... the our, our need to transform a donkey cart economy into a modern motorized economy right we're not thinking in those terms at all that is part of our problem well the large the, the, the larger part of our problem of government in this country and, and of, of I mean, when I listen to the economists discussing about, um, you know, exchange rate and um, budget deficit and so on, fine, these are, these are of importance, but they are important, of importance in the context of a vision that requires a movement from the primitive condition of the Jamaican economy into a modern industrialized economy. Okay? We're not going there. Not at the moment. And when we talk about the economy on the verge of a takeoff, what sort of takeoff? What sort of takeoff are we going to have in this economy when one of our principal sources of of revenue in the country, of, of, of income in the country, is a sugar industry that heavily depends upon really pinning these guys down and making them pay and pay massively. Remember Jack Smith for the massive misuse of our money. 
what is going on with the standard Sanders White House issue? What have we learned so far from all these sittings and shoutings? <laughs> Why does it seem as if they are allowing Mr. K. D. Knight just to mash up every proceeding? He has told them that under no circumstances is Mr. the, un the most honorable <laughs> Prime Minister ever to appear before such a committee. It would be so beneath him. <laughs> and Mr. Perkins, to there were three partners. The people for what happened under his Prime Minister, who is beneath him. Yes. <laughs> and Mr. K. D. Knight said, on no account is he going to appear that. You, you better learn that. You will never see that. And Mr. Mike Henry sits down and just takes it. Quite frankly, Mike Henry cannot handle the situation. Get him out and get someone else. If the JLP is not serious about it, we the young professionals who are watching are really going to be very disappointed. We want answers. We want results. There were three partners in Akingdown Newtown. Not just the UDC, not just Gorstu. Where is the IDB? Where is Mr. King, the Towers? Why is he not being called? That gentleman seems to have a handle on most of all the bigger issues carried out, pro not issues, projects carried out in the country. Yet still we hardly hear his name. And then they talk about God. Who is the reigning monarch here? <laughs> is Mr. Audley Shaw going to sit down with Mike Henry and watch this thing become a fiasco? If it does, the JLP will pay. Believe me, I speak not because I have something to say, but because... I speak not because I have to say something, but because I have something to say. Well, thanks for that letter. Um, it comes from a new Jamaican, and um, I hope that, that that is the direction in which um, more and more the thinking of Jamaicans is going to go, and to make serious demands upon our political leaders um, I am not sure that well I don't know but let's leave it at that I, uh, I think that this is a good sign and I hope that more and more Jamaicans are thinking seriously about issues like these and that the buffoonery that is going on in that committee at the moment, led by people like Mr. Knight and Mr. Junior. Um, Mr. Junior, yes, which seems to me to be designed to to frustrate the the committee's search for the facts of these cases. This case, which is likely to be embarrassing the more of it that comes out the more embarrassing it is going to be to their party and they're trying to frustrate that effort one more yes it's a poem or a ditty or a verse I don't know what you call it but I've studied the brown ones the black ones and the fat ones too I've looked searchingly and closely at all the benefits they will reap without shame or even a thank you. But I can't find much in any that spells hope for you and me. Have you guessed that I am alluding to your average PNP? Though you listen very carefully to everything they say, you'll find you're not much wiser at the closing of the day. <laughs> They do a lot of spouting of utopia to come. 
But what it usually boils down to is just a feather bed for some. <laughs> Next time they buy a beer or a plate of curry goat, then ask you for your vote. Ask them of the pros and cons and take note and then weigh them up. You'll find, I'm sure, it's the same old mixture, same old soul, same old, same old as before. So don't be fooled, not yet again, and don't be led up the same old lane. It leads to nowhere that you know. Think well, be wise, and know your foe. Thank you very much. Okay, that... Mom, don't. No, man. W when you have drought? Yes. You know uh, that people people in this area have large tanks, you know. Uh, and, and we have drought and they still have to buy water. All right. Fine. Um, how, how, how often do you have a, a, a long drought like that? Three months and beyond. You, yes, you've had a three-month three drought. Huh? Right? But, um, but how often do you have such a drought? Sometimes we have it um, sometimes three months, but sometimes two times for the year. Oh, yeah? We have heavy droughts, of course. Uh -huh. Well, all right. When you have drought, um, you have to buy the water, right? Yes, yeah. But apart from that, sometimes when people in Kingston can't can bathe, you will, be, you will be able to bathe. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Perkins, yeah? looking at the matter, you see, we would prefer the, um, the, 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 the pipe water that we used to. We have farms here, right? Oh. And if we have the tank and we take our tank water to, to water our, our, our farm, then, then we, we won't have any water for the use of our house. Well, all that is true. But look we need now. water, Mr. 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 Perkins. Eh? We need water. We need Mr. Azan to step up. Yes, um, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure how much I would be Mr. Azan, right? Mm -hmm. Because the, 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 the neglect of people mm -hmm. is common. It all, happens all over the country, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Whether by the Water Commission or by some other agency, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. They, they, one of the principal problems of Jamaica mm -hmm. is that government in Jamaica does not see itself as being there to serve the interests of the people. Exactly. Right? Exactly. You are complaining about water. Mm -hmm. Other people are complaining about hospital facilities. Yeah. Right? And mm -hmm. generally about health care. Mm -hmm. Almost every night you see on the television a story about somebody or other who has a health problem and cannot afford to have it treated in Jamaica, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Or the treatment is not available in Jamaica and they can't afford to go abroad. These are poor people, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And for every one of them that you see on the television, there are dozens of others out there, right? Yeah. But government is not, people are paying their taxes. And what are they getting in return for the taxes they exactly. pay? Exactly. Right? Government yeah. is down on you to pay the taxes. Mm -hmm. And what are they doing with the taxes? What are you getting in return for it? <laughs> huh? The Water Commission is there. Mm -hmm. People are there getting salaries and whatever. Right? Mm -hmm. And and a community, y y yours is just one community that is getting no service. There are such communities all over Jamaica, right? Uh -huh. They're not getting any service. And Jamaica, you 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 know what Jamaica was said to be the land of wood and water, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So there's no shortage of water in Jamaica. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. But the Water Commission is not about providing water for you. Why? Aren't you a Jamaican like every other one? Of course. Uh -huh. yeah. Then if, why should some people have pipe water to their homes and you not have it? Huh? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs>
<laughs> you know why? Hands. You know why? Yeah. Because they have no respect for you. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Mr. Perkins, no. the, um, the thing is this. Uh-huh. You must begin to have respect for yourself. Right? Yeah. If you want people to respect you, uh-huh. you must respect yourself. By doing what now, sir, when it comes By, to the water problem? Eh? By doing what now? By standing up uh-huh. and demanding. Okay, thank you. Right? Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Perkins. Okay. The, Okay, hello? Hello? Hey, hi, Moti. Hi, sir. How Moti. are you doing? I'm all right. You, you, you know what? You're all right. Huh? You're all right. What am I going on? <laughs> but the lady that was talking to you from Pekam, uh-huh. I want to say to her, you see, if it had left to the black man them alone, she could never phone a call from Pekam to you, you know. Because when the man in there are run things, she didn't have the phone to call from Peckham. The only time we'll have water is when the black man him go outside and maybe white man come back. They should have water at Peckham and water that flow all over Jamaica. Uh-huh. Because you see the black man them not a respect for the for them own people. And that is why they can't put water where and where people can have it. Uh-huh. It is not that it is impossible. It is a case that them on the do what suits them, not what suits them. Hold, hold, on just, hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here with you, sir. Hello? Yes, Marty. Uh-huh. Every day you hear people asking for water uh-huh. from every nook and cranny to make Water is life. They're asking for light. Uh-huh. They're asking for proper public transportation. And they're asking for just all the service that you can think of. Yes. These service can only function if people make them function. If people gonna have to make them function. If people gonna have to make them work. You understand? Uh-huh. And if people who is in charge of whatever was trying to make these facilities work, they could work. Yes. When cable and wireless was operating here with a monopoly, right? Cell phone was something that could never be used anywhere but around town. You understand? Did you sell come here? And make people realize that you can use cell, cell phone from Claverty Cottage or Pickle Pole or any part of Jamaica. Uh-huh. And it can work. Cable and wireless couldn't do it. And if it was left to cable and wireless until now, you would be paying about $1,000 $1, a minute to make a, a cell phone call. You because know, sir. Instead of them give you a proper service, they would only charge you for it without providing it. And that is basically what is happening in our system right now. Uh-huh. It's not that the light can't work. But the people who are in charge of it are the people who run the country. They only believe that well, they must only rob you and exploit you and, 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 and steal you. You understand? Uh-huh. They, they have, the idea is to exploit it. the poor and the weak and the vulnerable. But they realize that in the long run, the exploit and the exploited will find themselves in the same lane and in the same road. So therefore, it is no use exploiting people because they are weak and vulnerable and, and can't help themselves. The idea is to help people, pull people up. And that is why this country cannot go anywhere and it will not go anywhere because those who are in charge are the exploiters. They only rob, steal and plunder the people. The white people don't, don't, don't rob and exploit and, 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 and plunder and, and, and destroy you as much as oh their own black brother do it. You understand? That is a reality. And that is why the lady can call him from Peckham right now. I can almost guarantee that you're calling on a, a digital phone. You understand? And tell him that you don't have water. It's not that the water couldn't be in Peckham. But nobody is making the effort for the water to be in Peckham uh-huh. or in other communities across Jamaica or the light work. But you, you know understand? what is interesting? Yeah. The government of Jamaica is spending over a hundred million U.S. dollars. Right? To put, make preparations for, World for Cup cricket, cricket World Cup. Yes. Right? Right. A hundred million U.S. dollars. Yes. If you multiply that by 68. Right. That would be uh, nearly seven billion. Seven billion. Jamaican dollars. Jamaican dollars. I wonder how right. much water. And yet still... Seven hundred billion dollars could provide to how many communities? Absolutely. Eh? So you see, all I do is not to really build up the little people here and pull them up uh-huh. or, or cause them to be somebody. It is 
to high, to, it's a poor show great mentality, you know, uh -huh. to show to the world that we're great. <laughs> For people cannot be great. You cannot be great when you fill up yourself and come to me, somebody. It's not make sense to pretend that you are wealthy and you pretend that you are rich. You pretend that you are, you are great. And, 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 and the back of it is not there. That uh -huh. is why they spend so much money to build highways and to build all sorts of stuff. But they cannot maintain the little inside roads in the communities and the district and wherever for the people's benefit. That is all, you know. Uh -huh. Because they are trying to please the world and please everybody, all overseas and everywhere. That when you fly over the place, you see some roads and all that, and don't know how about the, the quality of life that the average Jamaican is living. Because the average Jamaican people are really and truly feeling it rough and tough right now. And money is being used and wasted left, right and centre by these people. Who's up. If it wasn't so, you think a Prime Minister could put free salary, free pension at a given figure while he know that ordinary pensioners out there getting $2,000 <laughs> every part, right? Yes, but indeed. But put him salary at 5 or 6 million with all the benefits. Uh -huh. You think in a civilized state that could happen? No. That can only happen in a place like in, in Africa or in, in, in the Caribbean where people have not regard or respect for the people who they lead. Yes. You understand? Yes. And that is really one of the things that is missing in our scheme of things. That is the cause of the crime and the violence. Is a cause of lack of respect, disrespect, and no regard for the ordinary man and woman. That is why the violence will continue. And blood is going to run like water in this country. Because oh my why? God. There is no respect. There is no, no regard sure. for people who are small and for their opinions. People trample and treat people like dogs. You understand? Yes. And that is why the crime and the violence can't cease. And I see no season and then to cap it all you have some like a fool, fool stupid men who come out and about them a profit who before them talk about <laughs> to help people to see what they are doing and to help them to move from one state to the other state they might talk about what they can't see and they talk about profits and they talk about a whole mouthful of rubbish they are the destruction of this country they are the destroyers and then if this prime minister believes they are letting go and follow them quash today and reach anyway so we soon find out to ourselves you understand all right sir Okay, you take good care. Thank you very much. All the best. Okay, uh, hello? 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 Yes? Yes, yeah, good Mr. afternoon. Perkins. Yes? Yes, yeah, Mr. Perkins. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you too, sir. Um, there's a yeah, there's a couple of things um, the want to say to you, Mr. Perkins. Um, Mr. Perkins, do you believe that the government is a peer setter in our country? Hello? Hello, yes. Yeah, Mr. Perkins, I'm yeah. saying, um, do you believe that in our country like Jamaica, the uh -huh. government is a peer setter? Is a peer setter? Yeah. Um. Meaning like, Meaning that if if the if the, 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 the country needs school, needs better roads, needs a fire service, needs a good police station, needs stuff like that, right? That the people them they, they cannot go out and, and have those things, give those things to themselves, you know. Yeah, the government they're the one collecting the taxes, so they should make you know make um things available for the people of the country. That's why I well, say that I look at them as, as a, well, hold on, sir. Government exists in order to secure the rights of its citizens. And those rights include the right to life, the right to liberty, and the right to the opportunity to pursue happiness. Right? Yes. That is what government exists for. Government doesn't exist just, just to demand taxes from you. So that yeah, they can, so that they can squander resources you know in, in... Yeah, you know, the next thing to again, Mr. Perkins, when we look on again with Jamaica. Yes. The, the corruption, the corruption has come from up in the top, you know, Mr. Perkins. True. Because, you see, Mr. Perkins, let me tell you something. So when we used to go to school, you have a little poem where we used to learn, you know, where uh -huh. say, speak the truth and speak it ever, cast it what it will. He who Those hides who the, the wrong he did. Hide it. So the wrong thing. Perkins, and a lot of them have secrets for them one another. And nobody now come out and talk to you know, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. You remember the time when, when the police 
one when them dogs can't go trial and when them Mr. Perkins and say, if them can't go trial and this shall be the mother of all trial. <laughs> that means he knows something about them. Uh -huh. Right, he knows something about them. So as the Prime Minister says she a prophet and she, she was sent from God and thing, you know what I mean, Mr. Perkins, she should must use that name and other them because she knows a lot of things too, where at the normal man in Jamaica, he don't know that. But she's the guy in the government, so she know a lot of things. She have a lot of secrets with her politician friend, the man. So if she got to know, say, she was sent from God. You know, what kind of example that they must set for the young, the younger generation will come up, Mr. Perkins? Uh -huh. Good, good, good question, the younger generation. Good question. When the younger generation see how they are behaving, what, 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 yes. is, what standard does that set for them? Hmm? No standard, Mr. Perkins. Okay. No standard. Because things should be, as far as how Jamaica is, with about 2.5 million people, Things should have been, things should have been running better in Jamaica. Yes. Jamaica too small, the country now run, run good. And then every day them come out and say, them, them go to a college and them have bachelor this and bachelor that. Uh -huh. And them can't no man. The small no man. Like that. PhD. PhD and all of them things mm, that they have. And then them can't run a little country. I refer to the country as a little donkey cat with the foot and the, the, the board funding. You understand, Mr. Yes, Perkins? Yes. This is not the way when Jamaica did just start out, Mr. Perkins. Jamaica never start out fit for the panda position and with them there in and no, Mr. Perkins. No, that's true. Right? A lot of, a lot of young youth in a Jamaica, Mr. Perkins, have the potential. Right? Yes. One time here, one girl come on and she said this guy was stealing and the man gave him a job and thing and th that, that guy turned out to be one of the best workers the guy did ever have. A lot of youth in Jamaica, Mr. Perkins, they have the potential to be something good. Yes, hold, and, hold, on, for, hold on just a moment for me. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here on land. Uh, hello? Yeah, Mr. Perkins. Yes. Yeah. Mm. You know, I was saying that, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of youth in Jamaica have the potential, Mr. Perkins. Yes. And uh, when you look on the amount of people who are dead every year in Jamaica, uh -huh. it shouldn't be like that. Uh -huh. No, it shouldn't. Mr. Perkins, because a life, a life worth more, Mr. Perkins, because people must understand that they never come here for just burn and live till they reach 17 or 21 and then you say, gunman shoot them down. People, you can't live till you're old and, and die of natural cause. We need a better you know, vision for the country, sir. So. Right? We need a better vision, Mr. We Perkins. need to get rid of right. the donkey cart economy and create a modern economy where people can find opportunity. Right? True, Mr. Perkins. And, and no opportunity in other countries, right? And you have, a, you have a selected few. Two of them can drive one car. Oh, and yes. And them big office. And, uh. and them, them feel like Jamaica running okay. And when you come and hear and you tell the truth, them don't like it. Well. Right? Because them sit down and say, why? Well, you know, say government now run the country, right? And we could say if we can get some people and put them out and try the next government here yeah, and see if them can do better. Right? Them not do that. Them can't find it. So them sit down up, up in a cherry garden, up at Jacksonville, and them place there. And, and I watch the little poor man, them are kill off them one another down there. Yes. And, and None of them now do nothing for, for help the people them, Mr. Perkins. It's the media, Mr. Perkins, we blame the media too because they are hide a lot of things and they are cover up a lot of things, Mr. Perkins. And, and you notice, you know, sir, why, you, know, you notice the difference when, yes. when a Tapanaris man get killed, right? Get murdered. The was just about to touch on, Mr. Perkins. Or a policeman get the murdered. Point, you hear the all the it things that are over. said, right? We must get to the bottom. We must spare no effort to get to the bottom of this. But at the same time, oh, every day, um, ordinary people are being murdered. Same way. Same life take away. Yeah, nothing. What, what, what you hear, you say, them friends say, them friends say, um, the man attacked the police with a machine. Uh -huh. And them never, they never know the rules, they know how it's going on. The police cannot tell right like, to you know, Mr. Perkins. That is true, too. No but but to that is not what I'm talking right? about. And, and, and what I'm talking about is a difference. 
the difference in the attitude of the entire society to a murder that is committed somewhere in the upscale neighborhood, right? And yes. a murder, similar murder, committed in a, in a city or country place or something like this, right? It shows yes. the different value that we put on different human lives. Right. Mr. Perkins. So, Mr. Perkins, one last point I'm going to touch upon before I leave this. I'm going to give somebody else a chance, Mr. Perkins. Yes. What I'm going to call out to the government for Mr. Perkins is, would I like if they can find it somewhere that they are to try and make um, education free for the people them. If, if they can't do nothing for Jamaica people, I'm going to ask them if they can't do that. But hold on. Because, Mr. Perkins, you see, you see, in America, Mr. Perkins, uh -huh. you see, every, every, every child has, has to go to school now, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. Education free, and every one of them have a school bus to come pick them up. The government uh -huh. prepare that. Yes. Because, you see, over here, Mr. Perkins, people work, you know, to pay a tax, you know, because they know that when they pay them tax, they might get back things. You understand, Mr. Yes, Perkins? They yes. might get back um, things. Value like, for their like, money? Five cents then. If, Right, like for instance, Mr. Perkins, if, if you hear a little old lady just down in her house and then call the ambulance, and the ambulance alone are coming, Mr. Perkins. Mm -hmm. Police are come, Doctor? fire brigade are come, and ambulance are come, Mr. Perkins, mm -hmm. because the people them pay them tax for them and get the service for yes. them fire yes. and what they need, right? If a Jamaica now, you, you see a one little police car come and, and, and you know, that's it. You, you, a fire there somewhere, when they look, you only see a one fire brigade come and then little five minutes after you see them run out of water. Uh, you might call you see the truck broke down and parts. I got to three months to come from, where to come from. You understand me? Yes, Mr. yes. So, you know, me just ask them if they can just say why. You know, make education free. Because that, that's, I think that's a start, Mr. Perkins. Once everybody can get a good education, then I think Jamaica will be better, Mr. Perkins. You know, all the killing and all of them things, they would have stopped, you know? Yes. I, th I think there will be a future for the country. You know, because education is the key. I'm mean, not telling them, Mr. Perkins. Education you know, and investment, sir. We have to have investment, too. Right? Yeah, investment. Yes. And yeah, you know, it's 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 it, 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 it come it's really still when you have when you have do things like that. Them not Mr. Perkins, me our man said by a program said, enough man who ban the chop machine in a in a up there in the office. Enough man who ban the office don't get chop machine. <laughs> right? Yes. Enough of them <laughs> Right, them cats them don't know not them Mr. Perkins. If you you see in a situation like that now, they must have Factories, you know, not not really factories, but you know, jobs, jobs ready. That's Opportunities. Education yes. And left school, right? Opportunity. You know, them uh -huh. can't go in and something and occupy them time. And it's a uh, hold on. And, you know, man, and and we need to recognize, sir, that our greatest asset in this country is not bauxite, is not sugar fields. It is the people of Jamaica. The people. The people, That's Perkins, the greatest the asset. Man, the people. Right? The people. And we are so taking we those... Enough that enough come out. You huh? can say when enough money will come out and want to blame the people them in that country and yes. say them lazy and say them this and them that. Them man, they, not, them don't know what I'm talking Mr. Perkins because how okay, can a man be lazy? The man, what, Mr. Perkins, may I tell you, enough youth in Jamaica want something to do right now, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. We'll leave at them, Mr. Perkins. But the opportunity not here. Yes. Yes. There are some people come out and attack all the people them this and the Jamaican people them this and the youth them no want to do nothing and them no want to do. Mr. Perkins, it's the opportunity to stay there, may I tell you. As you say, the greatest asset of the people, Mr. Perkins, would be that CEO of Jamaica would have just flourish. Mr. Perkins, you're and right, people, sir. You know, and it comes right back to the same thing when I'm trying to make more of the education, you know. So, you know, thank you, Mr. Perkins. All right, nice I'm hearing from you. The program a couple of times, uh -huh. too. All right. Okay, uh, hello? Hello? Hello, yes, good afternoon, good afternoon sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. How uh -huh. you? Happy New Year. Uh, happy, oh, thank you. Same to you. Mr. Perkins, you ever go a parade yet? Parade? Like, yeah. Not the recently. Trees, <laughs> the big trees, like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. No, not, not, Perkins, not, not in a you, long time. If you ever see rats. Eh? Rats. In parade? Yeah, under the big tree. Which parade are you talking about? Downtown, 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 downtown Kingston? Yeah, yeah. 
Huh? Yes, Mr. Perkins. <laughs> Mr. Perkins, and there's a little old nearest to Orange Street here. Uh -huh. I was sitting in my car because I took somebody to the bus stop to get uh -huh. the bus. Four o'clock to go to West Palan. And Mr. Perkins, if you ever see, I mean, I mean rats, you know, Mr. Perkins, I rats. Uh -huh. Mr. Perkins, and then there was a like a sky juice cat park under there. Uh -huh. Mr. Perkins, the rat, I'm just going to the cat, and Mr. Perkins, the, when we say rats, you know, I mean, I mean one rat, you know, rats. I wonder if they're going to have any other guests from the, coming to the cricket, um, to, um, for walking around at four o'clock in the morning in parade. I, I don't know. But Mr. Perkins, I think all <laughs> them rubbly, you know, all them rubbly. With their captain be a can thing, should I move because they're all about the rats? Uh -huh. But the, the minister should send for foreign, for some white man to come kill out the rats, them. Some Canadian. <laughs> yes, Mr. Perkins. Uh -huh. Yes. Mr. Perkins, I mean, I mean one rat, you know, I mean rats. Uh -huh. More than one. Big rat. Big. Oh, God, that's my them bigger than you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Mr. Perkins, you know what I'm beginning? I'm beginning to hold a horse. Horse. A what? Horse. Horse. Horse? Horse, yeah. You want, you want a horse, sir? Mr. Perkins, I want him as a pet. I'm in trouble with sugar diabetes. I want him for ride, like to shop and thing. You want a horse? Yeah. But I was speaking to Mr. Sabarati and he said I must pass down there and be one of the trainer one. So I can give him a number and the name of the year. All right. Well, I'll ask somebody to take it. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. okay uh, hello? Hello. Hello. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, Mom. Is this Mr. Perkins? The beast himself. Uh, hi, Mr. Perkins. Hi. Happy New Year Thank to you. Thank you very much and the very same to you. Yeah. I'm having a little problem with courts. With courts? Courts, Jamaica Limited. Yes. Yeah. My mother, you see, purchased a stove from the 29th of December. The last year? Yes. And all now, we can't get the cylinder of gas to use. Why? We paid extra money to get three refills. Every time one is finished, we take in the other one yes. to get a new one. Uh -huh. And every time they say, come tomorrow, and when we go there, they tell us that they haven't got any regulator and hose. Oh. And all now, we went there yesterday, and they said, come back today. But I don't bother go today because I know they are going to say, come back tomorrow. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, um... <laughs> You know, people, these things happen. Yeah. Um, and, and happen over and over. Yeah. Because, um, you know, people just accept it. Right? But, but it's long, you know, Mr. Perkins and my mother don't have anything to cook on. Yes, um, and therefore, I would, um, well, did they, well, I don't know. I, I would talk to a lawyer about it. <laughs> Just to get the gas? <laughs> oh, you mean? <laughs> if they, the if they entered me? into an arrangement with you? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know whether there's a specific arrangement. Yeah. Um, they, they happen to sell the gas. Yes, they are and they're out of stock somebody. At, and they're out of stock at the moment. Yes, but from the 20, 27th until now? Yes. Well, can't you get it somewhere else? Yes, but we paid our extra $3,000 for it. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Well, they no, they, they, they might... They're of the gas station. They are uh -huh. going to get it from the gas station uh -huh. to give it to us. Uh-huh. And every time they are holding us up. No, man. Tell them... Tell them... Tell them you, you're not waiting another day. If you wait another day, you're going to sue them. Well, I'm going back tomorrow. Yes. Yeah. All right. Working, you're my favorite talk show host. Oh, thank you very much. Yes, and I have two beautiful Sweet of you. daughters. They don't want me to listen to you. Oh, yes? Every time I listen to you, they said I love politics too much. <laughs> <laughs> because they know that you talk politics. So yes. They think I'm listening about the politics. Anyway, give them my love, eh? Yes, all, all right. the best to you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. We're back here online. Hello? 
Hello, Mr. Perkins. Yes, sir. How are you? Wait, where have you been? I've been trying to get you, but without success. You difficult to get on your program now. Oh, is that so? Yeah, but I got. So where, where, where are you? I thought you had migrated. Well, I'm here now. I'm here. Oh, you're but back. It's, it's, yeah, I'm back, but it's difficult to get you, and I'm on a cellular. You see, so I, I have to talk fast. I see what you mean. Yes. Ah, uh, Mr. Perkins, uh -huh. I would like a, suge um, a suggestion to make to our prime minister. You see. Uh huh. I think it would be better if she just shut her damn mouth. <laughs> shut her damn mouth. Mr. Perkins, every time she opens her mouth, it displays what I've been telling you over and over again. She has no intelligence. She has no does what? not speak like an intelligent person capable of... Oh, being you're being, you're being unfair. Country. No, and Mr. Perkins... What she says makes no sense. She is fodder for cartoons. Such She's as a what? Joker. Such as what? Mr. Perkins, how can she talk nonsense about about them? She taking on the media because they're not highlighting her achievements. Her Mr. achievements. Perkins, I have something to say to her. If her achievements are what she says, the people will be feeling it. You won't need the media to project it. We would know it. We would experience it. We would see it in the jobs being created. We would see an economy improving to the point where Jamaica begins to get prosperous. Uh -huh. With more jobs, more opportunities for our people. Uh -huh. And signs of hope in terms of the, the whole area of human rights is a disaster. It gets worse and worse. And yes. Mr. Perkins, I'm glad I got you this afternoon because on the front page of the Gleaner, there's this lady called the head of the lawyers, Christian Perkins. Yes, yes. Making herself an ass. Uh, well. And I hope a woman of Jamaica are not like these two women, like the Prime Minister and this woman, because I think she's been ridiculous with respect to the incest. Mr. Perkins, where do you draw the line? She's against funding kissing. Can a father not kiss and fondle and show love to his daughter or her uh, uncle to his niece? Mr. Perkins? Hello? Yes, yes. Yes. What I'm trying to say, I think she's too obsessed. This woman seems to have an obsession with sexuality to the point where she can't think rationally. Yes, the, the law, last time... Uh, Mr. Perkins, the law has already defined and made clear what incest is. Uh -huh. To talk about fondling and kissing, when, what, what kind of kissing is appropriate and what is not. Does she want police to be put in people's homes? She made up two with the homosexual issue. Now she comes on now with this business about uh, funding and kissing. Can a father show affection to his, ch to his child? Yes, that is the question that arises in my mind. It arises in any sense of it because you're an intelligent person. Everybody knows that. A thinker. When you think, you go where you are to go. This yes. woman has a problem. She has a problem. Because if, when you draw the line, a father... All of this daughter kisses her, shows fun, fondling, fondling, fondling. What is fondling? I mean, it's ridiculous. It is, it is so absurd. And Mr. Perkins, it doesn't stop there. There are, of course, indecent. Um, there is indecent, but the law deals with it. You know, if I understand, the whole incest is dealt with the physical act and other things as yes. well. Yes. Yeah. But fondling isn't necessarily indecent, sir. It doesn't That's quite true. No, it doesn't necessarily. And, and therefore, no. and therefore, one has got to to define what one means. Precisely. One yeah? has to be very clear. And my understanding is that the law at this point uh -huh. um, does define what would be illegal. Yes, it right? has done that already. And, and I, I, I really don't see why we need to go further. Hello? The problem, the problem must be at the moment that such things happen without any knowledge of it coming out to the authorities exactly. and without um, evidence without of evidence, it being available. Because you have to have proof. Yeah, exactly. absol absolutely. And it's not about cousin marrying cousin. What is that the business of government to come into? I, I really don't know, sir. That it has been going on. They're spending that has been going on for hundreds of years. Uh, exactly. Right? Norman Manley married his Mar cousin. Married his cousin? Yes. And what evidence is there? Of any uh, ill effect flowing from right. it. Right. What harm is there to the country as a... As a because they're, they're just wasting time. And they're not dealing with the problems that are that are affecting this country. Absolutely. Countries, as a result of it, Jamaica is literally bleeding now. Uh -huh. And we can't deal with that problem of crime and violence. Yes. But we're going to spend nonsense about a, a, a little funding and showing love and cousins marrying. <laughs> it is absurd. Mr. Perkin, I want to say something to our Prime Minister. She's making a fool of herself. I... I, I don't know. That's strong language, sir. Poor lady. Don't say that about her. 
Give her a chance. Hello? <laughs> Sorry about that. We lost, we lost him. Okay, we take a break. We'll come back shortly. Okay, thank you very much. We're back online. Hello? 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 Yes, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, Mr. Perkins. Mm -hmm. First time on the air with you, sir. Oh, I'm so happy to have you. You know, I'm at home and sitting down and I keep listening for you for the last 25 years, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I was just wondering, you see, kids that born two to three years ago, and this government was in power now, 18 years. Yeah. If those, I, I, I am thinking, if those kids have a vote at the age now of 21 and 22? Well, they are entitled to. They are entitled to. Mm -hmm. The reason why I ask you is, I have five kids. Matthew, I, uh, no, no, hold on a little bit. Right. They are eligible to. Right. The Constitution of Jamaica mm -hmm. does not, I believe, um, give to the citizen of Jamaica an entitlement to vote. Okay. The reason why I'm asking you this, right? Okay? Mm -hmm. When my kids was growing up, hello? Yes. Right. I have five kids, and when my kids was growing up, I told them, and they, um, 10, 15, 18 years ago, when they, when they used to canvas, yeah. And they come at home, mm -hmm. you know, and they ask their daddy or mommy what those people for, and you explain to them and say, well, if you want to vote, blah, 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 you know, you put your name on the voters list and they take your, your, thing, um, your photograph. Yes. Right there. And they look at me, even now that they big, 30 and over, and they, they say they can't be bothered because they can't go around and look for places to, to, place to register and going nowhere if the same thing not going to happen like how we was at home and people come around. And they are big people. No, but now. that isn't right. Eh? That isn't right. But they can't be bothered, they say, if you go look for place, they say they don't know where to start from. Mm. And I don't know where to tell them to start from. To go, they, they, they to start, they to start go. by going to the electoral office in their, in their, um, constituency. Right. So, for instance, no. It, so, suppose Matthew, I live in... hold on a little bit. I don't know, I, no, I don't know whether, um, I don't think that it is done that way. Okay. Right? Um... I don't think it's, be, it's done that way. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I have to check it out. Well, Mr. Perkins, mm -hmm. that's why I, I'm checking with you. Because it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it suits the two party, you know. Mm -hmm. Because they would have less name on the voters list. Yes. But w I think that when the, when the Constitution, when we come to the, uh, to the overalling of our Constitution. Right. Um, this is one of the issues that should be should be looked into. Should the citizen of Jamaica have a right to vote? Yes, we have a right to vote. Provided but only. There should be an office where he, to which he can go, right? And provide the necessary evidence that he's entitled, that he's a citizen of Jamaica, right? Right and should then be automatically put on the voters list. Right. But uh, what I'm saying now, it, ma it make it so hard for Jamaican people now that the, everybody that they just can't be bothered anymore. That's quite true. They just can't be bothered anymore. My, my kids say, well, they, they just can't leave them work and go look, drive around or yes. see any place and go register just to vote. Yes. You understand? Uh -huh. And it's very, I listen to you long in time teaching us a lot of things, you know, Mr. Perkins. Mm -hmm. You have tell us so much. And I can remember 20 years ago or 25 years ago, you say the most industrial country in the world in the 30s and 35 coming up and 20 was England. Mm -hmm. And I say to a young kid one day and say, how you know that? I say, yes. I say, yes, I get it from the teacher. Mm -hmm. You understand? So I mean... I know you're doing so much out there, yeah. but nobody's listening. You know, sir, uh, am I going to ask you a question again? When people, when party going to power, don't these poor people put them in? <laughs> yes. Right. Then that, this is exactly what's going on now, you know. Mm -hmm. Mr. Perkins, you could tell we so much in the world, nobody listening to you. 
because them just want a curry goat and a blah blah. We want a curry goat then. I am not a politician. I have belong to no party. For the time I hear that my if your census took up ten years ago, you still don't have no vote again. Um well they are you still living at the same place? They're taking people off the off the vote they did it took people off the voters list. Right. Um uh subject to re verification, you know? Right. They I, they came I around and mm -hmm. I don't dead, you know. I think it to be alive. Yeah. So they might have bloody well take my own off of the voters list because I I never care to go and register back again. Because uh -huh. I just can't be bother. Because yeah. if I live in Redis, where I go where I go to register over again. Nobody would know. Yes, you, they, they're sh well. What they do is they come around to re-verify you. Yes, but right. Or, or they, that was what they did when they were doing the re-verification. That is all along now, Mr. P. But it, there were a lot of loopholes in it, sir. Right. Right. Because from, I live at my house and I live at the same place for the last thirty years. I'm from in 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 the seventies. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they come around and I haven't seen nobody again. I haven't seen And yeah. Mr. Perkins, uh, let me say, let me say to you, you're doing a fine job here, sir. All right, sir. Only, and I, I listened to you talking to that man from England who's coming from <laughs> Montego Bay. Yes. And him tried to talk Patwa, and him tried to talk English, and him tell you first, oh, you is an intelligent man. How you so intelligent and you never go to university. <laughs> You understand? Yes. So I come in from Montego Bay. But there, there have been a lot of brilliant men in the world who never went anywhere right. near a university. Right. So I said, I said to myself, but this guy don't even know what he's saying. He can't <laughs> walk in and support his shoes. You understand what I mean? Yes. And another thing again, boy, I'm, um, I'm going to ask you a question. We as a people, are we, uh, what you would say? Are we against the animal are we one of the animal are the animal belongs to we are we we are we are a branch of the animal well we we are animals well, yes well, but, but um a higher order of animals it would seem than than pigs and goats right mm -hmm. but we call ourselves human being and we call the rest animal okay uh -huh. Uh -huh. but what i'm seeing these days i think the animal in the bush is behaving more than we as a people <laughs> Because I wouldn't mind they don't broadcast garden house on the TV anymore. Yes. Not the house, you know, the people. Uh huh. I wouldn't mind it take garden house, not the, not garden house and carry and put it in yellow span and we don't have nothing to listen to and choose it or hear them. Uh huh. Because I don't think they're behaving like the animals in the bushes. But you don't find Mr. KD Knight entertaining. Mr. KD Knight, I think, um. I don't think him have senses, him can, all him talking now, him think he's in, he's in the court. Oh, in the courts? Yes, I think he's in the court. Oh, do they allow the talk like now. that in the courts? I wonder. Right. But what I'm trying to think, I think those people who I'm talking to, two staff. Uh-huh. Right. I think the, the Jamaica Labour Party. Yes. Is too staff. Oh. I hear you talking about, um, state of emergency. Uh-huh. In those times, I know what happened in state of emergency. And it's creeping up back right now because the PNP government will do anything. To the win power. The man drop gun to and hear power. Eh? They will do anything to hold on to power. To hold that on. Is, and it's going to happen, Mr. That Perkins. That is what Mr. Mr. Pickersgill told us. Mr. Perkins, listen for me. It's going to happen. I'm not PNP. I'm not GLP. I'm no P. But I just keep on and I know I listen to these things you know mm -hmm. for 40 years you know uh -huh. because I am 67 now okay yeah so I'm listening to you and then you keep on taking sense out and nonsense and I says but if these kids none of these kids are how much are we in Jamaica now 1.2.7 2.7 right how much are well don't figure out how, how much people in that position you think can eligible for vote can, in kids, like really? from 22 I, I think it is supposed to be something in the, of the order of 1.3 million or 1. Point, those, um, are, those are kids like 20 and 22. Yes. Right. But, well, and, no, from 18. No. Point. If they were born, say, two years ago, yeah. R3, and, and the PNP is in power, I just doing that. 
18 years. They would be 21, 22. Uh-huh. Right. But none of those kids can't vote, you know, mm-hmm. because they don't register. So that is, that is this thing I was talking to you about. No, them can't vote. Yes. They, them don't register. And them not got time. For my own, them say them not going to look for a place to register. Uh-huh. They just can't be bothered. Well, my think, kids are 30. Uh-huh. Well, yeah. I think, I don't, I don't know. There, there's a new voters list to be prepared. <laughs> um, for, Mr. when is Perkins, it the end of... Mr. Perkins. Huh? Every time you hear this, you when you when this man was there first, Mr. Lee King or something like that, uh-huh. and they get him out, uh-huh. and they bring in Mr. What is here now, and him dash the summer we have for the voters list, and if you can't go find your safe and register, nobody no business with you. Even likewise, well, that's how it goes. People, you know? people should make youngsters should make an effort to ensure that their names are on the voters list. Yeah, they well, have. It is. This is their country, sir. It's and our country, should... not their country. Mm-hmm. Our everybody country. A big one. It's our, all our country. All right? of us, yes. So, and theirs too, as much as anybody else's. Right. And therefore, they should, they should ensure right. that they have a voice in what is happening in Jamaica. Yeah, Mr. Perkins, I know when, whenever time you leave us, going to leave the station, or host to along, or, you know, as age go by, uh-huh. who are we going to talk to? I don't know, I'm sure you'll find some others. No, ma- we will find others, but, I mean, everybody, I know one is coming brilliant like you, know, two of them is out there, and not going to name, and every time they, they, they say they're coming from Mr. Perkins' foot, foot, you understand? Oh, is that so? Two, yes, two, two. I don't have to name, I don't have to name them, but it hurts to hear when those guys talk, what about, what the, what the mother tell them and blah, blah, blah. You understand, uh-huh. Mr. Perkins? Believe you me, I find Jamaica now so, it's one-sided now. I mean, it's coming out too one-sided. And when I listen to the people them in the house I represent, I say, no, move it out to the swamp at Yala Span. <laughs> and don't bring it over the ear. Yes. And Mr. Perkins, don't let them use the program to advertise between PNP and JLP. Uh-huh. Let them pay for anything. And don't anybody talking about politics on the radio, don't entertain them. Mm-hmm. Trust me. Yes. Because when I see these big fat cats in in the house, Mr. Mr. Perkins, you know, you know. I'm afraid I have to leave you at that point. Okay, sir. Mr. Perkins. Okay. Talk. Thank you very much. All the best to you. Okay, that brings us to the end of Perkins Online for today. We'll be back hopefully tomorrow, usual time, usual place. Look forward to your company. So long.